Hello and good evening to everyone wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Solomon Izang Ashams. Tonight we're exposing someone who has been portraying and projecting himself as a man of God, a young man, uh, and has changed almost everything about him, but he is not who he says he is. So I really appreciate you just being here and, and, and being with me. And we are going to be looking at quite a lot about this young man because he has really done quite a lot. He has defrauded a lot of people uh, in the Val. He has a lot of students, especially young people that are involved in his, uh, his church. He has uh, defrauded them and he has done quite a lot of stuff. And we have to talk about these things. The Bible is very clear about this. When someone is unrepentant, we need to talk about him. This is a young man who is involved with, you know, the cartel of Bushiri and Hubert Angel, a young man who, has, who claims to be a forex trader, a young man who has uh, allegedly raped girls, who somebody who has taken money, who has manipulated people spiritually. And his name is Miss Nzua K. Tancredi. That's the person we're going to be exposing tonight because we expose the deeds of Satan. That's what it is. And sadly, he has been involved with Satan. Uh, whatever he, wherever he is now, uh, watching or not, we don't endorse what he's been doing. I have quite a lot of people here that we cannot even, you know, accommodate, you know, logging in in this interview that are going to share their experiences. And tonight, please uh, help me welcome uh, Ferrol, uh, and I have uh, El Buru, I have uh, <coughs> Kiboti, they all been part of the church that is new life in the Val, the Val, the south of Johannesburg, uh, in case for some of our guys who are watching right now, who are not familiar with the geography of South Africa and also with Johannesburg. This is a young man who you go across his social media pages. He projects himself as a very successful person, wearing designer's clothes, wearing suits, driving cars, and posing with cars and taking pictures. All of that is deceitfulness, manipulation, trying to create an image that is not there. He has defrauded young students at the Val University of Technology. One of them is here who couldn't complete her degree, you know, her studies and in, 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 in the right time that she should. Not just uh, a lot of them dropped out. So this man is affecting the future of so many other people. That's why we need to expose him. Guys, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for having us on your show, eh? On your live program. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Solomon. Let's, now let's start with... Uh, Kibotile, being the only lady here, let's talk about your attraction to new life. How did you get involved in the church and how did you meet uh, Miss uh, Tancredi? All right. Um, I was a student. Okay, well, I'm still a student at UT. And uh, a friend of mine, my housemate, invited me to the church in 2018. 2013 towards the end and I went to church and when I got there it was uh, youth uh, on fire for God and basically that's what attracted me to the church and they were prayerful it was we were all students I remember Ms. Muzwaketan Kredi the leader of the church was my classmate we were doing safety management in beauty um, but along the way, he, he stopped coming to class and then jiggy jiggy, um, he, 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 he got suspended because of uh, fraud and cheating. Okay, fine. Uh, but unfortunately, even finding out that I didn't leave the church, instead I mm. protected it. I didn't go to the church and say, you guys, Papa has been found doing this and this. So I don't think that the man is genuine. Okay, but, um, okay, the name of the church changed three times. It was Youth for Christ. 
and it became fountain of glory after he met Lesecho Daniel. And then it became new life after he met Hubert Angel. So Youth for Christ, everything was fine, really. There was no uh, um, hunger for money like he is right now. Mm. And then um, when we got to Fountain of Glory, Lesecho Daniel came for three days. I remember it was three days of three days of power or something and we were all skeptical because it was after the scandal of people eating grass and flowers and what what but fine he came indeed he did it in our own church that people were eating grass and were eating flowers and uh, tree leaves okay still uh we were on the side of our father, really. And then uh, that's when he started inviting a lot of prophets to the church. And I remember one prophet uh, prophesied unto my life. He was like, no, I see you getting married to who who. And I was like, yes, I know the guy, blah, blah, blah. But a few months down the line, he told me that I must leave the guy because he does not see my father being alive if I marry him. He does not see me working and I will become very thin. And I had already lost my mom. I was like, okay, cool. I'm not going to lose my dad because I'm, I'm going to get married. So I left the guy. Okay, fine. Uh, in the church, um, after Hubert Angel came, me just became hungry, hungry for money. Like, you could, he couldn't even help it. I was the ushering leader at some point after Penelia left and after Sunrise died, which everybody feels like it was a mysterious death, but it is what it is. And um, I remember him as the ushering leader, he was telling us to close the church doors because the amount of money didn't reach a certain amount of money. Like mm. it didn't reach 300,000 stuff. Hold on a little bit. There is, uh, there is someone here, I think it's Nzuake himself, trying to log in. Uh, but I don't, I, his, his, his device is not showing. I think he's trying to log in uh, and maybe state his side of the story. It would be good to have him here, just so you can tell him to his face who he is. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. You can tell him right in his face. So Nzuake, I can see you. I can see you trying to log in. Log in, just so you can you can try to defend yourself because there's nothing to defend. But we would give you the opportunity to say whatever you want to say. I call the shots here, so you can log in, and I will call the shots. I will facilitate this, and, and be able to get deep down to the truth. Now, uh, Kibotile, you were saying that actually, so you were at the church from the very beginning because you were classmates with Nzuake, yes. right? So yes. how old are you now and how old is he now? I'm um, 28, he's 26. He's 26, okay. Now you were yes. in, in class, uh, studying together, the same department, but he got kicked out. Can you elaborate why he got kicked out? out of the university? Because uh, he was sending uh, church members to go attend for him and write tests for him. So other people were writing exams and tests for him? Yes. So that in itself is exams or like academic malpractices, isn't it? It is. Yes. So how do how was he caught and and why and what sort of process did he go through before he was he was uh, he was uh, rusticated if that's the right word? Um, I don't know what happened after everything. Like what happened? I just know that he was suspended. I don't know what happened after that. It's only his boy that Gudani that can know that because he was the one trying to resolve the case for him. I see. So the moment he got the people rough, from, yeah, the people from exam office came to 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 the exam and um, 
called out the victim that was victimized by Mzwake to say, you are connecting to the anointing and you're serving your father by doing this for me. So they came and then they asked who Mzwake is. And that person, unfortunately, was not Mzwake. I see. I see. So the, the course that you guys were studying at the university, University of uh, Valley University of Technology, was transport what? It's safety management. Safety management. That was what you guys were studying together. Yes. Okay. So, and, and I know you rose to the, to the position of the, of, of the person in charge of, of ushering in the, in the church. You were the, the, the one in charge of that. But yes. before we, we, I get back to you, let's talk to uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh, what was your experience like getting into uh, new life? And also, uh, why do you decided to pitch your tent uh, in such a place that is, for me now, I can say horrible? <laughs> like I said, um, I am one person that had never been to church. And uh, what happened was, I think around 2014, 15, um, Bushiri came. Like everybody started talking about Bushiri and how he, he does his miracles and how he can turn your life around. And if you want to hear from God, you have to go through a prophet like him. So um, from that, um, I got introduced to Hubert Angel through watching uh, Bushiri on TV. And, you know, everybody, like at that time, I didn't understand the prophetic and how it worked. So I was like captured. I'm like, wow, this guy, what is like, how, how does he get it like that? And fast mm. forward, um, I was staying in front of Bale Park. So um, my ex-wife and I used to, to like... Um, I used to actually, I used to drive from the Val to, to Pretoria to go attend. And I remember, I think it was um, 2016, uh, February, Bushiri's birthday. That's the first time I saw Hubert Angel. And then staying in the Val, it became a bit of a drag for me to drive to Pretoria. So one day, and I had a church in Vanderbilt Park, like where I was attending. So one day on my way to church with my ex-wife, I came across uh, a banner with Hubert Angel and uh, Miz. And I was like, wow, this is that guy that I saw at uh, Major One's church. And I'm like, I want to go. I want to go. And then uh, I stopped the car and then I asked the guys with the banner, hey, guys, where's your church? They're like, the bus shuttle, they just go there. Our man of God is there. And then I got there. When I got there, uh, well, the man of God wasn't at the service. He only came later on. So I got welcomed and then I sat down and then everything was nice because um, there's a guy called Bayanda. He came to me and uh, it was Bayanda and the late, uh, what's his name? The guy that passed away. Um, he also came to me Sunrise. to greet. Sunrise. Yeah, Sunrise came and uh, Martin as well. I remember Martin who also left, he came to greet, and then I was ushered to the front to go sit there. But I only picked it up later why I was ushered to the front. I'll tell you later on as we go on. So what happened was I was just taken because I, I the prophetic was new to me, and I, I was just excited, I guess. And then um, the man of God came. Um, so I can, I can, sorry for you, I can't use the man of God. To me, he's not a man of God. The boy came. And the boy then, came, uh, yeah. The boy the came boy. and he's a, he's a lighty man. I'm like like 13 years older than him or so. So he came there and when he got there, what happened? Um, oh, he came and the service went on. And after that, there's a guy called Jacobas. Jacobas was the leader of the fathers. So him being the leader of the fathers, this guy is like, I think he's, in, he's like 60 years old probably now. He's like the eldest in the church. So they put him as the leader of the fathers. So Jacobus came to me after the seven days, like, hey, man, welcome. You know, I, it made me feel good. And they started telling me about the anointing, how the man of God can talk to, uh, who's this, the boy? The boy can talk to, to God and whatever problem that you have, you must just take it to him. He will have it resolved. And I remember at that time, I had a case that was happening, like, you know, and um, uh, what happened? He came and then... Um, I remember he would sit after that service. There was a chair where the, the pastor would sit, the boy would sit. And then I went there 
and then it was a queue. And then um, he gave me his numbers. He took, he took my number and I gave him his numbers. He's like, listen, guy, uh, whatever you want to talk about, just WhatsApp me. I'm here 24-7. Whenever you feel like you need prayer whatsoever, just hit me up. And I got excited because everybody told me this guy talks to God. The excitement Solomon was just out of this world. I remember I even called my mother. And I'm like, Mom, um, I met a man that can actually talk to God. She was super excited. She's like, wow, son. So you go to church. Because I had never been to church. I was like a drunkard. I smoked weed religiously. You know, like I was just that guy. And uh, my mom got excited. She encouraged me. Uh, it was a Sunday. The Tuesday, um, I mean, in the week, I started telling the, the boy that, hey, listen, hey, I've, I've got something, you know, there's something that's happening in my life. Can you help me with it? You know, and then I started explaining to him. And then I explained bit by bit by bit. So at the end of the, the, the chat, I told him everything that went down. And he's like, okay, don't worry about it. I'm praying for you. And I was excited. And then fast forward to the next service, the Sunday. The Sunday I get there. And then the first thing he does when he walks in is call out my name. And then he starts telling me about everything that I told him. But listen, it was it didn't even click to me that I was talking to this guy. Like I had told him everything about my life. And now he's prophesying. You know, he's, he's, he's speaking into my life and how my life. Like basically, it's like he was reading the conversation and just assuring me that, listen, guy, God is here and your problems are over. That's what basically happened. And um, I was captured and uh, I was sold. Uh, are you there? I think we just, uh, yeah. Are you good? I feel Sorry? I'm good. I, actually, uh, my mother's trying to call me. Okay. I, I, oh, your mother. Okay. Maybe you better speak to mommy. Uh, um, Okay, you're back here. Yeah, I'm back on. Thank you. Yeah. And then um I would say for somebody like you who was not who didn't grow up in the church, you yes. are a very good prey for somebody like Miss. You are the perfect candidate because there's a lot of things that you were not familiar with, isn't it? Please repeat that. I missed that. I said, for somebody like you who is not so who was not so familiar with church growing up, you yes. know, uh, you had your own way of life, but now you decided to go to church. For somebody like me, you are a perfect candidate mm. for what he wants to do. And he, he got me. I was stuck there for four years to a point where I left everything. I left everything from uh, from December. I remember we had a crusade in Mkutu. It's in Pumalanga, his hometown. So we drove down there and um, there was a crusade, I think two days. When we came back, that was the first time I drove him. He asked me, so how are you gonna, okay, let me explain, okay, how are you getting back to the Val? And I said, no, the guy that I drove down with, uh, he also left the church, his name is Mohau. Mohau had left because he had other commitments. So I was basically stuck with no transport. Me says to me, um, come and drive, you know, come and drive and then, I was excited. And remember, he likes acting like you didn't tell him something. You know, you can actually have a conversation with him now and tell him everything about that particular bottle like this and explain everything. But when he comes and there are people, he'll act like you didn't tell him. He starts saying, like, for everything, for him, everything is just a prophecy. So he was, like, prophesying and telling me, look, I see you as a good driver. Just come in. Uh, here's a Mercedes-Benz drive me back to the Val. And I remember how much I was applauded um, for being a good driver, driving back to, um, to Gauteng. And um, we got to Gauteng, and from that uh, crusade, one guy who passed away, may his soul rest in peace, a very nice guy. I was not really close with him because I was like fairly new in the, in the cult. And um, he... He left the crusade. I think he went to the Eastern Cape. That's when he passed away. I'm not sure, but somebody can correct me on that. So we got to we got back to the Val, and um, I think a few days later, uh, he calls me, the same guy. This boy calls me, says, hey, listen here. I need you to drive me to, um, uh, what's this, to the Eastern Cape. 
Eastern Cape, yeah, in Tabankulu, and I'm like, okay, not a problem, my father. And then here I am, I jump in. I don't know, ten, ten, I've, yeah. I've had, I've had you guys. So you guys were basically calling him my father. Even you, who is thirteen years young, older than him, you're calling him my father. Every, everybody, Papa, Daddy, my father, Major, uh, like he was anything gold. Like you can call him. Uh, he had a lot of nicknames, man. Like I could write a book. Like the list is just this long. Like he had a lot. <laughs> So um, we went, and that was like how I think going down to the Eastern Cape, driving nonstop. I think it was a ten-hour uh, trip from the Val. Nonstop, we got there, went to the funeral, drove back in the same day to the Val. I remember I died in my sleep, and because uh, <laughs> I was just super exhausted. And then we came back, and then from that day on, I started getting calls every day for me to come to the house, and they told me when you. When your father calls you, you must go down on your knee. You must always adhere to whatever he says. You must come to the house. Like, whatever Papa says, you drop. Like, you could be having sex with your wife. Everything must just stop. You understand? You could be driving. Everything must stop. You could be taking a poop. Everything must stop because Papa is calling. Like, you don't want to upset Papa because once you upset Papa, there's a fine. They tell you to reconnect to that grace that brought you close to him. You have to see it. And I'm not talking about 50 rand, Solomon. I'm talking about thousands and thousands. For you to... Your own mind. Yeah, yeah, if you... If, yes. So if you, if you offend, if you... If Papa calls and you don't show up, that means yes. you actually, whatever your, your reasons, whatever, you know, you, you now disconnect from that grace. You and know, you have to reconnect with money. You need to reconnect with the grace. Always, 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 always. How does that work? How do you pay? Um, you, you have to put money on his feet. Um, you have to, like, whenever, and you know, one thing that I'll never forget is that every time you see your father, you must have a seat. So whenever I would see him, this guy is calling you every day to come to his house. Every time you go there, you must have a seat. I, it got to a point where I was so broke. I had 700 bucks in my wallet, in my bank account. For the first time in my life, I had 700. I always had money. But now I have 700. And this is grace. This is, um, this, is, this is God. I speak to God. Like this boy is so funny. You'd be at his house and then he'd come to the car and be like, eh, son, eh, just, just start the car. Eh, God is talking to me. Let me go confirm something in my, what does he call it? My closet. I'm coming now. Just two minutes. Kaka. He likes he likes talking like this. And he's like, now, Papa, now, I'll be there. Looking back now, yeah. do you think he's a narcissist? Do you think he has a mental illness? He, he's a narcissist. That's you you put it right. He's not normal. For somebody to 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 operate like that, Solomon, it's not normal. And I mm. only saw that he was abnormal after I had left the cult. Like things just started not adding up. I'll tell you one thing about me. Ne? What happened between the the, gen, uh, the September of me joining and the beginning of the year. What happened was uh, my ex had just given birth in, in August and um, we were like not in a good state because um, apparently it's called post whatever. I don't know the medical term for it. So we had a lot of arguments, arguments. And for me, I was seeing Mama, the girlfriend, uh, her name is Charisma. The girlfriend would be kneeling down, and oh, no, no, I was no. like, so, 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 so now you have Mama, and then you have Papa, you have Father, a lot younger people who are like way, way, way your junior. Uh, I'm talking, I'm talking you know. 94, 95, 94, 95. Like, this, those people, let, let me let me just take you a bit back. Like, what happened was, here I am, I'm, I'm a married person, you understand. I've got a wife, and then I'm thinking, my wife, my wife is losing a mound. Why doesn't she bow down to me? You know, I started telling Papa, hey, listen, we're fighting at the house because one, two, three. Then I, you know, it was like an everyday conversation. And you know what the guy told me? He's like, bring your wife to church. And then I told her, listen, you need to go to church with me. And she says to me, never, I'll never go there because my friend is a victim of this uh charlatans there's uh 
papas of the world. My personal friend, my own friend that I went to high school with. So I'm sorry, baby. I'm not going to join you. And then what I told... To I, sorry? What happened to her friend? She lost money? She was sexually abused, raped? In, no, money. She lost everything as well. To, to the guy in, in Everton, actually. To the guy in Everton. And, Bishop Zondo. Uh, yeah, that one. And, that one um, is a big, a big criminal. <laughs> I don't know anything about that guy. But yeah, this, this is what basically happened. So I tell my papa, this small boy, that listen, this is what happened. And after this happening, and then um, he says to me, tell her to come. And I'm like, when I get home, I'm like, listen, they want you, the, uh, my prophet wants to see you. So he can talk to us, you know, because I wasn't happy. She wasn't happy. And then she said to me, I will never set foot there. And then when I went to the guy, this boy, and I told this boy, listen, this is what happening. He says to me, son, I had a vision about you. In my vision, you were getting married to Kibotile. And you guys had a wedding on a helicopter. <laughs> he tells me, you, I had a vision. You guys, you were getting married. Remember, Kibotile is deep in and they know there's no way of her going out. And then he says to me, that woman is not your wife. Your wife is Kibotile. And you're going to get married to Kibotile. You guys are going to, this anointing is going to carry you through and we're going to travel the world together. And then so you, uh, you, you have a wife. Yeah. Uh, with the baby, or she was pregnant? Was she pregnant at that point? With a, she had just given birth. She had just given birth. She now, had just given birth. And I had just paid my lobola, I think, the same year, the beginning of the year. Now this 22 or um, 23 year old then coming at that to you, time he was 22. 22 when i met him he was 22 years old and then coming to so, you and telling you that you a church somebody was supposed yeah. to be leading people telling yeah. you to divorce your wife mm. mm -hmm. and tell, now i'll tell you why I'll, I'll tell you why he said Are you there? Okay, we just lost. Um... She had her things going on. My wife. Okay. Uh, Start from the top. Am I back on? Yes, tell us. Okay. So um, he knew that she was going to be useless and he wouldn't benefit anything from her because she's not going to be part of the cult. So, how do we keep this guy here? We promise him the world. I was told that my business was just going to expand. I was going to have boutiques everywhere in the world, even in London, in America, in Canada. He likes Canada. And um, like, and he was just saying all those things. And he knew that <laughs> the only way to keep me was to, to make me leave her because she was not of God, because she didn't believe in what they were doing and she would never come to church. So basically she was useless to them because they would never use her in anything. Her money, her salary was not going to pay seed and tithe oh and whatsoever because, yeah, so that, that was it. So now they have me and they won. You understand? They won me and I'm excited because this guy, you can be, I was driving him everywhere. You'll be in the car and he'll be like, shh. And then he'll start speaking in tongues, start speaking, and then he'll tell me, listen, you know what's happening right now? One, two, three, one, two, three. Son, remember when I told, there's a guy called Gudani. Gudani is not his biological brother, but he tells everybody, this is my little brother. And Gudani was born 1993. Uh, Demis was born uh, 1994, March. So he calls that one uh, my little brother. This little brother, is a friend from Varsity. They met in Varsity, so they became close. And then they started doing things together from day one. So little brother knows everything. You understand? Mm -hmm. So now, um, whatever, if he wants to get you, little brother would be in the car. It would be the three of us. So he, he would say to, to little brother, like, remember what I told you about this guy? Little brother's job until today, until the last time I set foot in that house, his job was just to say yes. He's a yes bus. I don't know. You know those people, like when you just, he's a parrot, basically. Whatever you say, <laughs> he's a and he conquers. He agrees with whatever you say. Mm. So the little brother was there. 
I'm actually trying to understand the fact that you guys driving in the car and then he speaks in tongues. And he then speaks he starts in tongues. No, wait, wait. He, starts, he speaks in yeah. tongues and then he lies to you. So before he mm -hmm. lies to you, he would speak in tongues. Yeah. And then he begins to give you some sort of prophecies or whatever. Or, but all he was doing was lying. All he was doing was lying. And at that time, I'm scared. I'm shaking because my father can talk to God. You understand, Solomon? When somebody comes to you and tells you I can talk to God and you seem prophesying to people in the church because at that time I didn't know how prophecies were done but now I know so nobody can bullshit me on that so <laughs> when he comes and he tells you that That's your language. no foul language yeah. sorry 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 yeah so um, when he tells you that you, you just shake you shake and agree to anything like this guy I would be on my way to a business meeting or trying to do my, my hustle my business this guy would actually call me and ask, hey, son, where are you? I'm like, I'm, in, I'm on my way to Pretoria, but I'm still in Johannesburg now. Or I'm on the highway. Uh, come back to the house now. You have 10 minutes to get here. Solomon, that time, you, you are like 60 kilometers away. You are in Johannesburg. How are you going to make it in 10 minutes to the Val? Do you understand? It was just utter, it was nonsense. It was nonsense. You know, when I think about it, Solomon, I, I get so furious. Like, people don't understand. When you write about these things, when you talk about this thing, people think you are crazy. But mm. because they, they've never been who I am and what the nonsense that I've been put through, the lies. You know, when I start um, living my life from 2016 until 2019, when I finally made my way out, like, I cry. Like, it, it messes me up. Like, yeah. I had to seek counseling. You understand? Like, you, 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 one had to, like, see a therapist and be like, hey, listen, this is what's happening. What do I do now? You know, because it, it hurts. It hurts. It, it, we're yo, gonna, it we're hurts. Gonna come back to you. We're going to come back to you, Pharaoh, and, and okay. quite a lot that you have to say. If you're joining us tonight, we're exposing <clears throat> me, Zua Kate Tancredi. He is uh, the boy that leads the church. We, we have decided in consensus that we're going to call him boy, isn't it? So... He's so a boy. He's a lighty. He's a lighty. Right. So we, we are, we're exposing him. He runs a so-called a cult, not a church, in the Val uh, called New Life, and projecting himself, especially on social media, doing forex business, manipulating, abusing people spiritually, emotionally, uh, sexually, also uh, abusing people. So if you're joining us tonight for the first time, please can you subscribe to this YouTube channel, Solomon's Temple. Please, if you're on Facebook, go to Solomon's Temple and, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, there are other videos that, that are explosive that you can watch, that you can also share with other people. Please keep tagging people. Thank you so much for tagging a lot of people. I see about 1,810 people watching right now. Just guys, just to tell you that people want to know what you've been through. You know, And they, so will know. they will know tonight. Yeah. They will know. Let, let's go to L... El uh, bu, bu, Buru, is it? <laughs> I'm trying to El get Boro. your name. El Boro. Let's go yes. to you. You, you. you, Rose, you joined the church and you even got to the position of, you know, being one of the worship leaders. How did you get in there? Um, I remember it was uh, 2016 September when I yes. joined the church or the cult. And then when I got there, the man saw me because I was walking. Uh, actually, I got introduced by this other young man. Uh, he was so, some sort of a favorite son then because he was not too famous. Uh, and then when he saw me with that uh, young man, um, he concluded that man, that, that, that guy is Tsonga. So he concluded that I'm Tsonga. Already he was trying to prophesy to me. Trust me, I was. Ju I had just. Uh, I, I had just came out of a company. I had my money and stuff. Life was good. I dressed nice. Uh, I was always in suits. I made sure. When I got there, uh, the man saw somebody dressing nice, and he decided he wants to prophesy. Then he decided, and uh, and when he came to me, he was like, um, "Are you? I see you. Are you from Shigalo? Shigalo is some. I think it's some place in Guiani." Then I said, no, uh, no, no, man of God. I was not yet, to you, not yet used to this papa thing. I, uh, it was new to me. I said, no, man of God. Then he said, but I see you, you speak Tonga. 
Yes, I speak Tsonga because uh, I've lived with Tsonga people, but I'm not Tsonga. So he was like, uh, okay, um, I see you, you have some calling, you, you are a general, all these things. They had this other group called the generals, which I didn't join. He just said, you know, I see you have a great calling, you are a general. I just said, thank you, man of God, and all these things. Uh, then, yeah, that was that. I think he was trying to force the, 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 the prophetic out and he was busy lying already. I was disappointed because he was lying to me. And I, I'm, not used, I'm not that kind of person who will say yes if you're lying. I will say no, you're lying. Whether you're big or small, I will say you're lying. So uh, I, I denied the prophecy. Then he, he was like, you know, um, one thing I see about you, you won't be in the Val for a long time. Uh, that one, he was accurate. I'm out of this cult. Uh, I, I didn't stay for long. I, I was there 2016 towards the end, 17, 18, January after the crossover, January 2019, just after the crossover, I, I saw myself out. So what uh, really breaks me about that guy, he is fake and he lies a lot. He pretends to be the most humble guy on earth, yet is very prideful and arrogant. And he calls his uh, pride and arrogance boldness. So that's what he calls it. He calls it boldness. So, yeah, what, what I can say about my experience, uh, I, I remember, I'm not, I, I don't like show off. I would give to church and a lot of money, but I wouldn't announce it. I wouldn't put it in an envelope. I wouldn't wrap it up with anything. I wouldn't write my name anywhere. Maybe he saw it. I, I kept on just giving, giving, giving. Then when he prophesied to me at bus shuttle, that was the place he went to immediately when uh, he was no longer doing the services in VUT. Then he was like to me, um, you know, I, 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 he was like, you know, I see you, you are a general, you are going to go far, all these things. He, he, he likes promising. Then he said, you know what, take my personal number. You know, when I give you my personal number, there's something special about you. And, you know, you must never give them to anyone. And I was like, what the hell? Because, like, having my pastor's number, if you're going to be leading me, I'm going to be needing you at some point, uh, at some point and you're going to be needing me. So already he's making it feel like it's a favor for me to have his number. I was like, no, man. Okay, thank you, man of God. I will call you. Then that guy, um, he says, call me uh, tonight. I, I called him. And then he was like, you know what, son, you know, when we have money, you're always driving, you're always going up and down. Uh, remember when I came, I was looking good all the time, always looking sharp. Then he was like, you know, yeah, so I'm busy. Uh, call me later uh, tomorrow. Then I would call him and stuff. And then I, I got tired of running after him uh, because I didn't even know what I was calling him for. But I thought he was going to complete the prophecies that he was just, just doing half half. So I realized this one is like there's something he's seeing in me because I'm a freshman in the cult and I, I'm always sharp, looking sharp and all these things. Then we leave that. Then I got into the worship team by saying, he said, you know what, you're a general you and all these things. There's a calling that God wants to use you in. Then because I didn't want to wait and I knew that, yes, I have a calling, but I, I'm a worshiper myself. Uh, I, I won't wait for me to be given a specific position yet. I can be, be useful in another department. I decided, you know what? I talked to the worship leaders. They said, you know what? You can attend the practices and stuff, but you won't join immediately. You will wait for three months and stuff. Then, yeah, I said, yeah, it's fine. Uh, I will follow the protocol. I will just be practicing with you guys for that three months while you check my commit commitment and dedication. Then, yeah, I did that. Then he came to the practice and he's like, what, are you here? Then he's, I, I said, yes, I, I'm here. He said, so what are you doing here? I said, uh, I'm a worshiper as well. So he said, oh, so you are a worshiper? Then I said, yes. Then he said, you know what, uh, let him sing a song and then um, all of you, you will back him up. Then um, I, I took the opportunity, I sang, I sang, really. He confessed even himself, you know what, your gift shakes the world. Like, you are not just, he was like, there are singers who just sing for, and people applaud, but you, your worship shakes the ground. There's something that happens in the atmosphere. And I, I believe that about myself before he could say that but i also believe that because he's the one saying it and i feel like oh he's superior he can see he can prophesy uh, 
So maybe it's telling the truth. I started taking my gift even more serious. Not that I didn't take it serious, but more serious. I wanted to protect it with everything I have. If I had to live a clean life, I wanted to do that. If I had to protect my reputation, I wanted to do that. Just to protect the gift in me. Because yo, the man of God, the mighty means had uh, confirmed. So years, years went by and things started happening. And then I started losing money. And then, you know, when you don't have money, you become useless in, in a cult. You become useless. And then um, what I can say happened when I was in the worship team was when now um, I'd be worshiping and then he would sit me down for like three months. Then I would ask him, I'm, I'm, a, very, I'm a very confront, uh, confrontational man. I would ask him, uh, why, what did I do? Not in a disrespectful way, but I asked so that I might understand if there's something wrong I did that Papa picked up in the spirit. I want Papa to tell me so that I can change it if I need to repent, so that I can repent. But up to my, uh, according to my knowledge, I, I didn't think of anything that I might have done wrong. Then he would sit me down for three, uh, three months there, something, uh, something like that. Then um, when he brought me back, I remember the first day he brought me back to the worship team. By just holding the mic, say, the church celebrated without me saying anything, without me singing, just holding the mic. The same thing that they do when Papa uh, uh, does his grand entrances. So I think that thing hurt them. I think it broke them because I could see there's this other guy called Bayanda there. Hey, that guy's jealous. That guy, he doesn't want to see anyone getting close to his Papa. Then Is, is, I, is that Papa, Pastor Bayanda? Yes. Do you want us to call him? Uh, you can call him. I'm not afraid of anyone. I have his number here. So you can. let's try to call him. Because what we could do is we bring all these people in so they can, maybe he's watching. Maybe he's not. Let's see if he's going to answer. All right. Okay. Should I wait for him to answer? Yes, he's ringing. Just listen. He's ringing. All right. So he's like the second in command or something. Yes. Can you hear it ringing? I can hear it. I don't think he will answer though. <laughs> Maybe he's watching. I'll let him watch. Okay. You went to voice mate. I will try to the second number, but continue. Yes. So that guy hated me with passion. That guy hated me with passion. I don't know why. Every time I talk to that guy, then all of a sudden, if we, do, we have a misunderstanding, all of a sudden, the papa now also hates me, is also angry at me and all the stuff. So what I didn't like about Mzwaka is that somebody comes and tell him a story without even confronting me. Like I'm a, I'm a son and I'm serving in the church. If some, another son come and tell you something about me, the best you can do is to show good leadership. You must come to me as well. You can't take one side of the story. If you are That's really right. listening to the matter to, to, to solve then the papa hates me and stuff. So that thing of people celebrating whenever I'm reinstated to the worship team, I, I, would, I won't lie. I just had a good relationship with the church. I, I made it alive. I, 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 I'm calling Pastor Bayanda again. All right. I'm calling him. Does he know his num your number? You have reached a voicemail right service of zero. Seven. He doesn't know my number. I got these numbers. I just kind of like source around and got these numbers. So we, 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 have, just reached, uh, we have just reached that there's about 2,038 3, people watching. Just to tell you guys how important and why people are interested in what happened at New Life in the VAR. You know? Yes. Uh, for every one of you guys. And I really want to appreciate each and every one of you for even coming out in the first place. There was George. George couldn't connect. He was supposed to connect with us. George was actually going to tell us how some of, the, some of the miracles were created and some of the pranks with money, how him and his brothers lost so much money there. You know, and oh, wherever yeah. you are, people in the media, Zambia are logging in and, and all that. Please tag other people so they could watch. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel uh, just so we can share this. It's good for us to talk about this. It's good for us to take it out there because once we do, then people would be able to understand. 
and see that, you know, this is not about any individual. This is about the church. This is about people like Nzuake who should be in school right now trying to get their degree, but took the shortcut to try to go and defraud people, you know. I don't know. I'm going to ask uh, Kibotile later on how his wife is involved. Is his wife involved? Is she aware of that? Is she, uh, is she partaking in that? Is she cooperating and being part of the whole scheme? You guys call her mama, but I don't see how you guys been brainwashed for you to call her mama or whatever. That is totally uncalled for. It's not supposed to be. We're going to take a one short break and we'll be back right now. Again, thank you so much for, for joining us. And uh, if you're just joining us, please talk people, share this. We're here to, the Bible says in Ephesians 5, that we should expose the work of Satan. That, you know, I don't know any other way of talking about issues like this in church from the pulpit, which have been going on over and over again. I don't know any other way of dealing with it. You know, we have to deal with it by really exposing it. And that's what we, we're doing here. And we're talking about it. Uh, Kibotile, your mic is off. Uh, let me unmute you. Your mic is off. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. So for you being a female in the church, uh, how was the relationship between male and female boys and girls, and also Nzuike, a missus relationship with other girls before he got married to Charisma. Can you hear me? You cannot hear me, right? He cannot hear you. Do you want, do you want to log out and come in again? Lo log out and come in again. Yeah, log out and come in again. So, but... Pharaoh, for you, what did you, what did you see whilst you were there, especially for you coming from a background of no church, but now you are there, but you began to see certain lifestyle that is the lifestyle that you also used to have outside of church, but now you are in church, but then there's the same lifestyle, you know, like what were some of the things that you saw? Yo, Solomon, a whole lot, eh? Um, it starts with the lying, a whole lot of lies. The guy would lie about anything and everything. And let me tell you, he's not well informed. Um, I don't know. He's just, he, he's not well informed. He doesn't know anything about anything. The only thing he knows is about manipulating people and then taking people from money. I think that's the only thing he's been trained to do. And he only speaks that language. The guy can't even construct a single sentence. I remember when I came into the into the cult now, sometimes he would actually ask me to type for him because he wasn't sure of words. But as a papa, he wouldn't he wouldn't want to expose himself like that. He'd be like, son, I'm tired. Can you do one, two, three for your father? And I got excited. I'm like, wow, I'm on papa's phone and I'm doing one, two, three, four for papa. And <laughs> <laughs> so, um, why are you guys laughing? Marshall can you hear me? Yeah. So Marshall just joined. Yeah. I'm, I'm laughing, laughing at Marshall's one. joining. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello everybody. <laughs> I'm Welcome, Dara. Dara, how are you? Dara. 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 Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. So, so you guys are all familiar with each other, right? Yes, we are. Yeah. We, we are like this. All right. So Sparrow completed, so we can move to Marshall. Okay. Um, 
like I said, it was lies and also girls. I'll tell you why I'm saying girls. I tell me about girls. There's no Uber before you continue. Like yeah. Before you continue, uh, can you please advise Marshall to do the same thing, the rotating and stuff? Yes, Marshall, Nada. can you please put your phone in a horizontal position? Horizontal position, like this? Yeah, yeah but click on the auto-rotate. Okay, let me see. It's an oh, iPhone okay. 11, Amdara. <laughs> Carol, you can continue. Continue, Carol. Okay. Yes, thank you, Marshall. Oh, going back to the girls, like I was saying, okay. I, I I have the Uber app. I will I will actually screenshot the trips that I did for him. Um, all of them were like after hours. I mean, at nine o'clock, he would tell me that it was it was supposed to be between uh, the boy. Gudani and myself. So what I did was I would Uber girls from four way Midrand to the Val, straight to a guest house. We're talking about nine o'clock in the evening, around this time. And then he would say, I have a business meeting. He wouldn't disclose that it's a lady, but you know the Uber app gives you an op uh, an option of talking to the driver because the driver's like, who's this person? Like, what is this person wearing? Because they're using my app. Then I'll pick up, yeah. oh, it's a lady. The first time, it was a lady from um, from Four Ways. I still have the address. I'll send you on WhatsApp. And uh, it was that, and um, it was, uh, that thing just, just made me to like start asking myself a lot of questions. Like, how do you have a business meeting with a girl nine o'clock in the evening? Like, that was my first in question. A, in let's, 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 let's look in at the, that. Was, was that in before a guest he house. got married? Was that before he, was he got married? married? He was married. He was married. That's, that's okay. if he's even married. That's if he's even married. So I'll, okay, I'll, get, I'll, get, to, I'll get to that one. Yeah. I've got that's another I'll get to that yeah. one. Mm. He's not, so, so we are not even sure if he's married or not married, right? Not, not on paper. If he can dispute this, he must bring it on paper. I have it on paper. He is not legally married to the girl. Well, the black, the sorry, like the traditional way of Lobola and all that, they did that. But uh, marriage, I'm talking about. My name is Tabang Tabong, and then I'm marrying Kibotile. Kibotile becomes Kibotile Tabong. You understand? So they're yeah. using that surname, which was taken from uh, prison break. It's not his surname. I'm sure you know about that. So um, the well, girls going well, back. His to the name girls. is his, his name is Frank. <laughs> His name is Frank. <laughs> La, yeah, is I have, I have his, I have a copy of his ID somewhere in my documents. What's his I have name? His ID. What's I have his, his, his. You are saying it right. You are saying it. It's Frank. Frank. La, yeah. Diana. Nineteen ninety-four, March the sixteenth. That's him. Let's move you to Marshall. Me. Marshall, Oscar. move to Marshall. -ish. This makes me. <laughs> Marshall, Oscar. we we have a lot to talk uh, about here. We can do with you guys, you know. Okay, I know um, you have. What has been okay. your experience there with uh, uh, and also the the New Life Church? Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Um, my name is Marshall Baselli. Um, you know, my my heart is very heavy. You know. Um, first of all, I just wanna ask for forgiveness for every person that I have scammed. That I have scammed. Uh, at the New Life Church. That's what I want to say first, right? Um, Good. I was the real prophet at New Life Church. That's what I'm going to say right now. <laughs> Mzwake was never a prophet. I was the real prophet at Mzwake's church. You know? Why right. is that? So, right. I'm going to say that. I was the real prophet. I was the prophet. I'm the prophet of New Life Church. Not Mzwake. Mzwake has never been a prophet. I'm the real prophet. Right. Um... <laughs> What I can say is um, I don't want to talk about any man of God that I don't know 
I don't want to talk any man of God that I've never had an encounter with. I want to talk about Mzwake Tangredi, Frank mm. Layana, a.k.a. Mzwake Tangredi. Right. I went to the church. I joined the church. The people that were faking miracles and doing prophecies, it's only two of us, me and Bayanda Maseko. There Bayanda was is no one that. who was Bayanda and me who were the ones that were real prophets. Mzwake was never being prophet. It's me and, and Bayanda. We are the people who were doing miracles at that church. When you come to that church, I take the information, I give to Mzwake, we record everything. Mzwake comes on a Sunday, he prophesy on you, Solomon, or he prophesy on you, Waldo. We took every information we give to the prophet. That's what we used to do. So if Mzwake can come here and say he's the real prophet, he's lying. He is lying. I was the real prophet there. Faking of miracles, going to the... They used to have a, a place where we used to do in the church, in the new building, where we used to do... Uh, where we, we used to call it a sick bay, where we used to go there. Every information when Mzwake walks in in the church, he's got the information. I've got the proof everything because he deleted his church page he thinks that was stupid minister enza and martin Kondua, they used to do editing of videos i've got everything solomon but everything you... he can delete Marshall, the church Marshall, page Marshall, how can you say you're the real prophet when you were faking the miracles and you were manipulating yeah the i'm the real prophet because i was giving him information you are the real exactly. fake prophet you're I'm the real, the real fake prophet. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm the original real fake prophet because I take information <laughs> to people, I record it on the phone, I give it. Yeah. And the other people that I used to take information from, they are watching right now. Somebody was inboxing on, 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 on Messenger right now and say, I knew you took my information. I know they are watching. My brothers, my sisters, I want you to forgive me for putting things in your bag from Zaki to prophesy. For putting things in your bag from Zaki to come to church and prophesy. I never think, Solomon, that I'm going to say right now, that I'm so hurt right now. My heart is heavy, Solomon. I want everybody that I've scammed, everybody that I've scammed with Mzwake to forgive me. Mzwake. Every, everyone that I've for, for, for scammed with Mzwake to forgive me. People that were coming to church, they were thinking that Mzwake is from God. Mzwake was never from God. Mzwake is not a prophet. Frank Liana, you are not a prophet. And you know it exactly. We were suffering in that church. We were struggling in that church. No place to stay. No food to eat. Why would you are lying, giving us fake visions in that church? He knows exactly what I'm talking about. So the only people that were doing prophecies, taking information from people, from Zwake to prophesy, it's me and Bayana. If the people of New Life Church, they are saying, ah, these people, they are, are faking, they are lying for the prophet, um, Zwake is the real prophet, Zwake is from God, um, Zwake is the real prophet, it's fine. Why did Reverend Gilbert leave the church? That's number one. Why did Hazel left the church? That's number two. Why did Neo leave the church? That's number three. Why did Waldo leave the church? That's number four. Why did Kibotile leave the church? Why did Pumuto leave the church? Why did okay. Mamash Kwamba leave the church, the leader of the women? Why did they leave the church? People they never ask those questions. Because Mzwake, when you leave the church, is going to go to the pulpit and preach about you and lie and say, you know what? These people, I rebuked them. They didn't listen to me. Now they're leaving the church and this and this and this and this and this and this. Why is lying and painting our, our names? So you want to tell all those people that left the church, all of them, they are wrong. Muzwake, you are clean. <laughs> Muzwake, you are clean. Everything. That they are, what we are saying, you are clean, Muzwake. I've got a girl that inboxed me. A girl that inboxed me, that slept with Muzwake. Muzwake promised the heaven and earth. What did, what did that girl happen? Muzwake threatened that girl. Bayanda went to that girl and threatened that girl that if you say something, you are dead. 
She can't speak. She's broken. She left to school at VUT and went back home. She can't say anything. Her mother told her to say, you know what? This is the time. Let it go. Her mother said, let it go. God will fight for you, which is not good. Mzwake, you know exactly what you're doing. Kids right. are leaving school at VUT. While they're doing evangelism for you, every day they're doing evangelism, going to give pamphlets, manipulating the kids. That's what we used to do at that church. I remember, stop, listen to this. There was a guy, I think this guy knows, at the old building, there was a guy who came at that church. And then, uh, you remember when Mzwake was living in the car, he parked his porch at the front door. Then there was a guy who came. I think we used to, oh, that guy was doing the renovations at the church and stuff like that. You pull out a gun. I think this guy's the remember. I think this guy's the remember. You pull out a gun, though, that guy. I remember. One the one with the CLA. I think, I think one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He was driving a Mercedes Benz, and then, the CLA. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And then we went in the office. We sat in the office, and then Mzwaki said, you know what? Every one of you, you don't love me. I see Marshall loves me. He means me. You was taking a bullet for me. Marshall is dying for me. And then all those... And, and then after that, Mzwa, uh, uh, Waldo and the guy, the guys who were there, but Peter and stuff like that, they, they were so heartbroken. And then after that, what did Mzwake do? He calls me and my... Make sure you take care of this. Solomon, I went to look for a hitman. Me. Me, Solomon. Me. I've been keeping quiet. Mzwake can't do anything to me. I went and looked for a hitman for Mzwake. To take out that guy. No, no, no. Luckily, no, no. we find the guy with the connection. Michael, Michael, wait there. That is a very important point you're making. How did you get to a place exactly. of looking for a hitman for Nzuake? <laughs> when you are looking for a hitman, that means there is a target to be assassinated, to be killed. Nzuake. Exactly. Is Yes. Are you sure about that? What we didn't kill him. We wanted to. We wanted to. We wanted to kill him, but we had connection from the other guys that they went to those guys, they took the guy, they and they tell him you are not supposed to go to New Life Church and question the prophet and what you did and check out the gun and stuff like that and blah 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 blah. You understand? Well, we, we lost your camera there, Marshall. So we um okay. We lost your camera there. So if you can if you can sort it out, we need to come back to that hitman situation. And I understand your your point, Marshall. And I like the way you start for apology by apologizing, Marshall, and seeking for forgiveness from the many people that you have scammed one way or the other. You know, for me, that is very, very important. It's important for us to start that way because at the end of the day, this is not just all, all about exposing. Uh, an individual but it's about exposing truth and when you expose truth there needs to be repentance there needs to be us taking responsibility for our role and what we did judge welcome your microphone is off judge. let me see if i can unmute your mic uh judge your mic is up can you can you switch on your mic judge George, we're waiting for you to switch on your mic. Can you hear me, George? Can you hear me? Look at the icon on top there. There is a mic. It is is muted. Yes. All right, George. Thank you so much. We're going to go back to, uh, to uh, Michael uh, very soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Are you there, George? I don't know if I'm audible. Yeah, we, we, can can hear you. You. we can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you, George. Whatever. You can you hear me? Can you hear me? Just, just log out and log in again. Thank you, thank you, mom. Log out and log in again. So, yeah. 
that that should do. So, George, you need to steep water, a lot of it actually, because you just made a very serious. I wouldn't say allegation because, based on what I have known about Zuike, he's capable of asking you to hire a hitman, you know. But how did you even get there? Did you even negotiate the amount that you're going to pay? You gave the hitman information where the person is, all that kind of stuff, you know, using the pulpit, using the church to do okay. that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Solomon, can I speak? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I think Kibotile, she was speaking here. Yeah, Kibotile knows she was having a bro boyfriend. Her boyfriend was Yannick. They were dating Yannick and Kibotile. Kibotile, we had the rumor, me and Bayanda, we had the rumor that Kibotile was speaking bad about the prophet in Zwake. We went to Kibotile where she used to work, ask her. Me and Bayanda, we went, two of us, we went there. We ask her, why are you speaking bad of Zwake? You know that you can disappear. We threatened Kibotile <laughs> at the shop that she used to work. She ended up being in trouble. Me and the Bayanda, that's what we do, that was our work. If you speak bad about the prophet in Zwake, we come for you. So what we used to do, I look for a hitman, right? To take out the guy who pointed the gun at church. And then luckily, when we find somebody who went and searched the guy and talked to the guy, the guy apologized. We tell him, don't ever come back to this church and point a gun to Zwake Tangrede again or else you will disappear. What I can tell you one thing, Solomon, <clears throat> is one thing that I can tell you, I was afraid to speak because I know what Mzwake Tangred is capable of. People, they see nice cars. The Porsche, the Mercedes-Benz, the house, they think he's from God. They don't know. Nice suits. They think, ah, this man is from God. He's preaching the word. This and this. You don't know what is behind the camera. What is behind the curtains. What is behind everything. People, they don't know. People, they don't know what is behind. How is he capable of? I'm telling you. How is he capable of? He can make you disappear. He can do anything. Muzwake. That's how he's capable of. That's how they know. Because they call themselves pro prophetic mafias. That's how they do it. So when I was saying Solomon to you, he was the real prophet there. I make sure that everybody who come to the church, I take information, I do Zwake, we write it down, I give him Zwake, Zwake comes, he prophesies, ah, can I do small, small? Me, I'm commenting at the church, oh yes, daddy, ah, bring it on, papa, prophesy major. I was the guy, people they know. I was the guy who was doing that at that church. I still have videos even now saying, ah, bring it on, major. Oh yes, papa, prophesy. I knew what was happening. We arranged a Sunday service. She <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Even if the church has not started, let's say, let's say we are having a Sunday service, a big church day. We arrange it before. <laughs> we arrange it before. When you are going on Sunday service, we already know what you're gonna do on the Sunday service. Muzwake was never a prophet. Muzwake is not a prophet. What I'm telling you right now, Solomon. They know everybody know. Before I move from I'm telling you, you, my heart is beating. Tell us about, tell us about yeah. his relationship with tell, tell me about his relationship with women. Okay, let me tell <clears> you about this relationship with women, right? Um the the, the day that I know that Mzwake is interested you know, in women you know why, it was when we you know why, just hold on. You know why I'm I'm asking that? Because we have we have I have received information. Uh, there's actually somebody, I'm not sure if we could uh, all see and read this. Somebody sent this message. She said, uh, she sent it to Pete Lee, said, I was raped by Z, Zwaike, obviously, uh, in the Val. My family doesn't believe me. and They have chased me out of the home. I'm squatting at yeah. a friend's house and I'm going to kill myself. Please call me mm. urgently. You hear things like mm. that, you, you know, what sort of a man, what sort of a boy is that? Um, that boy. One, one, one thing that I can say, Solomon, is only one thing, right? Uh, let me tell you something. Muzwake 
people, one thing, kids, especially at the VUT, at the school, right? And the people that are in front of Bell Park, and the leaders that are in the church, and the Magogos and everybody, they think he's a prophet. That's one thing that I can say. Muzwake is not a prophet. The yeah, tell, us, tell, us about, tell us about his relationship with women, especially with women. All right. How when I find treat? out his relationship about, about women, I want to tell the truth, right? Uh, we're renovating the new building. Mind you, the new building, I'm the guy who found the new building. I am the guy who found the new building for him to rent. He lied on social media that he bought that building. He never bought that building. He is renting. Even Hubert Angel posted the building of ShopRite. You remember Waldo and Pumuto, you remember and Kibotila and Ashley. You remember he said he, he bought the building. Yeah. He didn't yeah. buy it. It's a lie. He didn't buy that building. Muzwake, you are lying truth to God. No, you are a liar. You are a devil, Muzwake. You lie to the people. You that you bought the no. building. They must give, 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 give. Ah, come and give. I bought the building for six million. And then me, me myself, he called us in the office. Me, Neo, Bayanda, uh, Pastor Bongani. He's watching. Pastor Bongani is watching right now. Bongani is watching. Bongani is watching. We went in the office room, Marshall. You're gonna see these curtains. They are curtains they call dripping in the church, like these curtains of mine dripping in the church. And then he said, Marshall, you must tell the people that you paid ten thousand. How can you pay ten thousand for something like this? Manipulating people. And after that, Muzwake locked the doors of the church. No one is leaving the church until you give. Muzwake was locking the doors of the church and say, You don't leave the church until you give. They are watching right now. When they locked the, the, left... the church door until you give. So it's like they are forcing until you to give. Exactly. He knows it. He they knows the door of the church. Them. Everybody must give. If you don't give, you are not living here. That's what um, Zwake did. So I'm giving to Why God. And you're forcing me to give to God. I'm giving to God. You're forcing me to give to God. Exactly. And then people that will come and give is Ashley. Ashley will give 10,000. Minister will give 10,000. Me, I knew everything. I never give him one run, Solomon. Me, I never give him one run. I knew. I knew this was a scam. I never give him one run. We'll go to the front and say we're giving. We strike the machine. There's Gudani. I give Gudan the card. Gudan say, hey, Marshall is giving money. I give the money. The slip comes out. We are lying. We never give. We make them these fools to give. Oh, they wow. think you are giving. They don't give. Wow. They are fools. They are wow. so fools. They think you are giving. Ah, Papa, me, I'm giving 10,000. Yeah. Clippings for my son is giving 10,000. It's a lie. We never give. We never give. Give to God. God will bless you. Give to God. Come on, raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. How much are you giving my daughter? I'm giving 10 rand, Papa. How much are you giving my daughter? I'm giving 10 rand, Papa. Are you my daughter? 1,000, Papa. 500. You are being scammed. By Zwaket and Red, we never give because we knew we were his guys. Everyone knows me in that church. They can't refuse me. They know me exactly what I used to do. They know me no. exactly what Marshall. I used to do in that church. Marshall, I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to stick to the question. Tell me about his relationship with the woman. Stick to that. Let's okay. talk a little bit. Let me go back go there. To... All right. Where... We were renovating the, old, the new building. I found the new building, right? And then there was a certain lady who came to the new building. She was driving an old Q7. That was Mzwake's ex. It was I me, Bayanda, and Genius. Genius we is, life, is, is, is watching right now. Yes, we Genius is, is watching right now. Thank you. It no. was Mzwake's ex. She came. What? There is an upstairs. We are renovating the upstairs. There was an upstairs where there is a dining room and offices and stuff like that. Muzwake went to, with the lady upstairs. When us were renovating down, he said, nobody must come upstairs. He was with that lady, two of them, for a couple of hours. When he came out from there, I was shocked. That's number one. Number two, when Muzwake was addressing, when he was sitting down like this, he would say when he wanted to describe, um, I want that girl in the ushering team. We say, ah, which one, Papa? 
you'll be like, uh, that, that one with the nice body. That one with the nice body, you remember it? With the nice body, that one. I'm like, what type of a prophet is this? <laughs> I was shocked. <laughs> Muzoted speaking. I'm hurt, Solomon. I know you're hurt. I'm hurt, Solomon. <laughs> Drink some water. The same girl, I can, I can, I can attest to that. I can attest to that. The same, the same woman is so. Let's go to Kiboti. Kiboti, like, you, I'm so you've been, yes, you've been yes. the head of the Osherwin team. Obviously, you have young, beautiful girls in there. Uh, what was the relationship of girls and guys in the church? Obviously, we're not saying they shouldn't have relationship, but was the relationship really godly? What was Zuzwaki's relationship with, with, with Gal? Has he ever asked you to organize a girl for him and tell you, like, look, you like this girl, all that kind of stuff? Uh, okay, I'm not going to lie. He never said I must uh, like, do anything for him when it comes to girls or anything. But um, I can, I can, because all, like every time I'd go to the office to seed or to type, he'd always tell me that I must learn to keep quiet because I was close to the wife at some point. I was close to Le Toronolo, not Charisma. So with the girls in the ushering department, no, they are crying. Who, who is his wife? Uh, you call Lechlo Konolo and Charisma. Was he married twice? Is it the same person? No, it's one, it's one person that yeah. evolved. So Lechlo Konolo was a nice, different kind of girl, and then she married Zwaki, and she became somebody different. And she was alienated, and she was told that, Charisma, you must make these people need you. Don't just be available. Which means that for you to see her, you must sow a seed. I see. So you know what? So that's I have to, I have to look up her number. Let me try to call one. Maybe she would answer. Right. This one goes. Okay, continue. I will try the second number. Yes. So I, I, I never like Muzake never asked me to whatever. But when my ushering department, the people that I was leading, everybody was taken out. He said that he wants ushers, beautiful ushers, ushers of class, and he's going to call them hostesses. So Rona as the prayer warriors, it was time out because we didn't have time to slay. We were prayerful. So our season ended. He said he's bringing in beautiful women. He said that uh, beautiful women attract people into the church. Therefore, if you've ever been to New Life Church, there's always beautiful ashes at the door. Mm. Mm. Right. Now from your and friends. Yeah, go ahead. From my friends, um, like, let, let me just say from Ashes. I remember I was speaking to one of them and she was telling me why she left the church. She said that Muzake would come to visit her where she was staying with the generals, these guys. Uh, um, at that time, it would be Buzbuda, Bumavu, so they, are, they know themselves. So they visited this girl who was an usher and then Muzake hugged her inappropriately. So she overlooked that until he came back again and he said that you must play jazz music the next time I come and you must cook for me. And he gave, he gave her a hug, a hug where you feel the man of God's penis. That That's type exactly, of hug. That's exactly how it works. Yes. And then after that, she said, I had to run for my life. And then with the other young ushers, they were young. We were students at VUT. Other leaders in the church would take advantage of them. And I remember this other lady, Akshem, she was in the cleaning department. A guy did something to her. And Muzwake, in front of the church, but without the mic, I was sitting in front. The girl was going to give. And he said that, 
Bayanda, come. Hazel, come. This is the last time I speak to this girl. You, I forgive you. So every time you do something that doesn't please him, he must forgive you because he is the God and, and charisma is the prophet in the church. Mm. And charisma, which that is, is what that's his second wife, no. isn't it? Keep going. You no, know, it's, it's I'm just, just gonna it's try to one. No, he has he has one one wife. Letoronolo Charisma is her name. I was yes. just uh, giving you the the two people that I experienced. I experienced yeah, well, Letoronolo as the woman of God in church. And then when she got married to Muzwake and named Charisma and announced as Charisma, then yes. she was now a different person. I know people now, would say maybe I'm jealous or anything, but it breaks my heart to see her the way she is without a voice, controlled. She can't go now, anywhere without being called to come back. She is spoken to us. Uh, I mean, she, she is spoken. Like, I remember this other day we were cleaning a church and he called her and he's like, Charisma, it's about me now. Don't, I'm hungry. Come to church now. And then this other day, day he was like, Charisma, they think you're a prophet. You are not a prophet. I made you. How did you? Oh, my God. It breaks my heart to see how Muzwake treats that woman. Oh, that girl. Now, I want to ask all of you. Charisma has a baby now, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. And who is the father of the baby? baby? Who is the father? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. Was the, ba was the baby made in the baby? Or was the baby made Who is the father? The baby is made in London. <laughs> you say that again? Oh. Maybe he's made in London. Wow. Hi. <laughs> By a machine or human being? By an angel. <laughs> Hi. I'm finished. <laughs> it doesn't need a it doesn't need a, a PhD person to figure this one out. This is Thank from, you, Solomon. This is from reliable source. source. Mm. Very reliable. Mm -hmm. Now, Hibotile, before I leave you, you mentioned you have a copy of your ID and your passport there. And, and your, oh, yes, you changed, I do. Yeah, you changed your name. Zwaiko went and changed your name for you because he felt you belonged to him. Is that it? It, was what on the, it was on Somebody's the mic is misbehaving. Yeah, Check your mics. Yes, that's better. Yes, go ahead. It was on the 25th of uh, May 2017. I remember I was with the, the House of Paul guys. Uh, we were going for a photo shoot for the company that we were working on. And I got a call from the wife, from Charisma, saying that you must come to church now, today, like now, and you must make sure that all the ashes are there. Okay, fine. I call the ashes, guys. There's a, a woman's um, service. Please make it to church today. We went to church and he preached uh, about whatever. Then after church, I was called. And then he was like, stand there. Then he, he started praying. He's saying that I, I, I separate you from where you come from i separate you from any spirit that is tormenting you i remember i was bowing down and i was so ashamed i was like i've been in this church for like five years now and i still have demons but either way um he said that uh okay after making the the prayer he said i must stand up and he said that warona must take off my shoes and and uh, she did that, and then he, uh, he was like, stand there. Okay, I did that, and he was like, um, he was like, the devil wanted your soul, but Jesus said no. Okay, and then uh, he's like, from this day on, you shall no longer be called Kibotile. 
you will be called mpo, which means you are a gift to the church. And listen to me, go go to home affairs and change your name. Just like Can that. Still... Yes. And then so after that, I change your name from Kibo Tile to Mpo because he yes. feels uh, you are a gift to the church. Yes. I'm not sure if I can, it can show. I don't know. This yes, is, we can. Can you, we can, can yeah. you see Kibo Tile? Okay. Yes, and then after that. Know. So you changed it. Can you see this one? Now your ID is changed to Mpo. Yes. I see it, the second name there. Officially, yeah. you changed the name because you felt you should do that. Have you reverted back to your name now or you're still not done? You have still done that? Sir? Have you reverted back to your original name? Yes, towards... I did. Yes, yes, okay. I did, which was the How most painful thing. Um, I haven't fetched it yet because I did it in Centurion and I'm not on Gauteng for now, but I know it's out. But I left the church in, in after uh, their birthdays in March, April in last year. And after Marshall and Bayanda came to work to threaten me and then... I resigned in, in, in August last year because I just crashed. It was a lot. He told everyone to stop talking to me, to block me because I am a demon. I have demons. Marshall, you've really done a lot of damage. Huh? I see why I've, you're asking. I've done, I, I have done a lot of things that, that I'm not proud of. And some other people, they're even watching right now what i've done damage because there's this certain guy i think is watching his name is uh gerald i think he's watching gerald uh he came with his wife at new life church then um Muzwake prayed for the wife because she was sick and then i think after two to three weeks uh she passed away she was hiv positive hiv positive and aids because what what we used to do you know those testers for HIV, those those things, those ones. What do you call it? Those the HIV home tests. Kit, the... The home, yeah, the, the home kit. Your... Yeah, yes. the home kit. What, what you can do, you talk, you take those things, you put them in the microwave, you heat them up, right? When you heat them up, we take them, the ones that we have heated up, we put your blood in those ones, and then after we put your blood in those ones, they show negative but you're hiv positive and then we go in the church we say papa this lady she came to the church for nine years she was hiv positive and then Muzako say bring the oil bring the oil let me pray for her pray for you and then after that we take the one that we've heated up the one that is original we heat it up and then we say you're hiv positive and then the one we've heated up we say you are hiv negative papa we have just tested right now she's now hiv negative People, they jump, they scream. They don't know anything. You are still HIV positive. There is no way that Mzwake has healed you from HIV. That's what that I want to say. Too, Marshall. How, 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 Marshall, how did you guys even discover that when you take that HIV key and put it in the <laughs> microwave? Like, you, guys, you, are, you, are, you guys were manipulators. You guys were deceptors of notes. You were smart, exactly. but your smartness was not used for the glory of God. Exactly. Exactly. To say HIV, we come, we scream loud, Papa, this lady has been HIV for 10 years. Right now, she's negative. Somebody shout, glory, and this and this and this. People, they're screaming. They don't know. They don't know what's happening. We've created all those things. Even the high blood pressure machine. Even the scale to reduce weight, it doesn't work. That scale to reduce weight, that one they use in the churches and say, ah, you're going to lose weight right now. Watch the scale. It's a lie. It's all a lie. There is I'm nothing gonna come there. I'm going to come back to you again later, Marshall. We haven't brought... Oh, where is... I was going to go to uh, Gray, but I see he just disappeared now. 
But Alburu, you and the worship yes, team. Worship team normally have uh, beautiful girls, nice voices, anointed. Oh, yeah. But then somebody like Nzuike would have his eye on them. And you had a relationship with a girl that he is couple, isn't it? Uh, she was not in the worship team. But yes, then, I um, you have a relationship. Yes. You know, when you are in the church, everything must be reported to Papa. Yes, I went to try to follow the protocol and say, you know what, Papa, uh, I'm interested in this lady, one, two, three, four, five. Then you saw what, you know what, son, that's a very great move. And then remember, this, is, this was after you bet Angel had prophet lied to me. And then, um, you see, after the prophecy I got from my father, I trust you when you say you love her. All these things, all these things. Then he said, you know, go for her. I went for her. She agreed. I went to. I went back to him. I was like, I was it's like, I was hypnotized. Though it's like I was brainwashed. Like, how can a man like me? I'm how many years older than him? How is how old is he? Twenty six now. I'm four years older than him. Then um, he would be like, eh, okay. I, I went back to him and say, Papa, eh, she agreed. One, two, three, four. Why, what is the right move now? What, what, what should I do now? They will be like, you know what? Eh, it's fine. Eh, she when she's ready and she feels like you are the one, she will also come and tell me. I shall. Can't he? Oh, he's not ever gonna wait for her to come and tell uh, tell him. He goes, he calls her, he calls her to his office, and he tells her how much I have demons and how much she must not date me because if I date, she dates me, I have a family history of demons that defeated my father and that are fighting me. And if she doesn't leave me, she's gonna inherit them. That's what she was being fed whenever she's called to the office. She's gonna inherit them. And then she was going to lose everything, her work, everything she have, money, everything. Then I was like, okay, if he told you that, I'm like, I'm a son in the church, I'm serving. If I have demons, he should be the one praying for me, not telling people that I have demons. How can you do something like that? So I was angry and I'm still angry. And that guy, I want to be in a ring with him, man to man, fist only. I want to donor him, hot. <laughs> So that guy, then he calls the lady. Then I went to him again after she told me what he said to, 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 to her. Then I said, Papa, now I want to introduce her to my family. And I was provoking him because I know he's talking better against me. Then he said, son, it's a good move. Immediately, she was called again. You know that guy? He, all this, he said a lot of things. Mind you, this is the person that when I'm worshiping there and the church is alive, It'll be like, son, you know, you carry a specific anointing. You remind me of when I was young, of which I believe is nonsense, it's rubbish. And I was dancing for the Lord the way you do. You know, God is going to take us uh, in front of the church. Then tomorrow, because I'm interested in somebody that he is interested in, or somebody he wants to harvest before uh, I take for a wife or something like that, then um, all of a sudden I've got demons. So with the other girls, I don't know what he was doing because we, with, as a worship team, we would always meet on Saturdays and we were together for the Saturday for practice. But I, didn't, I don't know what happened after Saturdays and during the week or stuff if he was interested in any other of the girls. But with his stories with girls, there's one girl who confided in me. She was my, <laughs> she was my younger brother, like uh, as girlfriend. Then, uh, what happened to the man? She visited the church on a Wednesday. Uh, there was a church, uh, church service on Wednesday. Then when she visited, uh, she was spotted because they spot beautiful girls very fast. Then he prophesied to her, you know, you need to come back. I'm not done with you. He loves this thing with beautiful girls of giving half prophecies so that he must tell them to come back. Then after the church, he sent Gudani to go and fetch her number. Then Gudani fetches her number. Then the papa is calling. When the papa calls, mind you, it's my brother's girlfriend, so I know. Then uh, she, the papa calls, and then, uh, you know what? I saw something about you. I need to talk to you urgently. You need to come. When can you come again? Then she says, I will come on Sunday. That was The call was after the Wednesday. Then when she says Sunday, he said, you know what? Sunday is too far. You need to make it any time before Sunday. Then she said, uh, you need to come on Saturday. Then uh, she, she agrees to come on Saturday. Then when she agrees to come on Saturday, he, uh, uh, he, he gave her instruction on where to come. When she gets there, to her surprise, it was a hotel. When it was a hotel, um, there were three guys, Gudani, Peter, uh, himself. 
And then himself is not taking care of the payments. Gudani holds the cards of the church. He was the one making payment. Then she was given a tag to the room. To the room, he, she goes alone, sit there. When he comes, that guy, the way he's so afraid, the way he's so weak, the way he's so, he has got so many enemies, he doesn't do anything without protocol. He doesn't go anywhere without them. But that day, because he wanted to harvest, he went to the room alone and left the other ones outside. Now she's surprised. Now it's about prayer. You are coming alone. It's in a room with a bed. Then instead of the prayer, she said, I asked. She said, she told me, live 99. If he denies this, I will, call, I will come back here and mention her name. And I will ask if I can take her to tell her story. And she, Mzwaki is not the only one. Even his father tried the same thing with her via inbox. Even his uh, uh, brother from uh, 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 Pretoria tried the same thing. So, yes. So, so even, even Angel, Ubed Angel tried it on her. Bushiri tried it on her. I would say the name. It's okay if you don't say the name. I would say the name. Because these guys, they have track records of abusing girls, inboxing girls, and raping girls. And that is just their modus operandi, you know. And, and, yes. and we have to talk about this. We have to talk about this thing. He, unfortunately, he, he's beginning to get into that, that drift of, of yes. wanting to, to continue to abuse girls and to abuse women. And I think, you know, at the church, there's been so much abuse and so much stuff that's just been going on. I was going to speak to Gray because I haven't spoken to Gray. Gray, are you there? Just switch on your 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 uh, your, your, mic. Your, your camera. Uh, I will switch on his 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 mic here. Just switch on your camera, uh, Gray, if you're there. We we have to hear from you uh, because that is very important for us to to be able to to, to talk about. We have just about uh, how much time? We have about twenty three minutes to go uh, to bring this to a close. But Marshall, okay, Gray is here. Uh, hello, Gray. Um, Gray, can you hear me? You have to unmute your mic now. Unmute, unmute your mic, Gray. Good. Can you hear me now? Hello, sir. Yes. So what's your story? Your name has been pounded around um, a little I, I bit. I don't hear anything that you're saying. Uh, you're saying, but can, can I just speak regardless? Yes. Yes, speak. Speak. Hello? Speak. Yeah, speak up. I can talk. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't even know where to start, but I, I would say, uh, you know, when, 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 we, when I personally went to, to that church, I went to that church because I was, I was, I was, I was, you know, I was seeking God. I was seeking change, you know. I was, I was hungry for for God in terms of. I was hungry for God to be speaking, and I love God. Till date, thank God that I even lose my faith, regardless of what what happened when I was that was when I was in that place. But it started very well. Then 2016, that was that. That's when I think there was a certain shift, where this this person became, you know, out of this person, something just just changed in jail. especially after the passing of, uh, of of one of our brothers, who was very close to us as well, uh, Sunrise. Um, before I can even go further, I would also love to to apologize to to everybody else that ever you know invited to that church everybody else that i've, I've ever um, uh, you know evangelized to every person that i've also ever been in business with but at the end of the day they were not happy with my services because no one why were they not happy with your services were so you running the 2017 when we started into when we ventured into business me my and my other brother my other brother Sabunti, so I saw uh, Minister Wealth. We were doing well in the first uh, the first goal. We we started to to show a, you know a sign of improvement in terms of finances. So basically, this guy um, Apostle kept us very close. We were told that at first that whenever we would make money, whatever amount that we receive in our in our in our in our lives, we needed to to report to him. So we had to to report that 
we oh. we have received this much. If let's say I've made a withdrawal on on my businesses or in my trading history, I had to report and tell you that look, I've received um hundred thousand rands from my my within. Immediately when that was done, first and first we were told that every time whenever we make withdrawals, we need to make sure that all the money that we receive, we need to lay seeds as his grace is going to take us far in life. You know, loving the man and thinking that this is a this is a man of God and you know, thinking and loving him so much that you you would put his needs way ahead of your own. You wouldn't even be able to pay your own rent think his grace and his God is going to rescue you from from this this kind of of, of pressure. So it started like that, where literally whatever we would receive, all the money would go to him. You, are, you, you give him the money that you receive. Sundays you are, you are required to come and give a seed. If they say we are raising a seed, we are raising uh, 1.5 million at church. You be the first people that will be told the day before that tomorrow we are raising money like this. You need to make sure that you, you, you do your best. So remember the pressure that you have now. You have the pressure to make sure that you you need to, to, to you know to honor. You need to honor the seed. You need to honor the man of God. You need to honor the man of God with anointing and all of these things. Okay, it's fine. But the, the only problem that started was when he started to also do things on his side, his own businesses where he kept on taking money from people. But when trouble struck on his side, he knew who to put the blame on. When there was pressure on his side, he comes back and put the blame on us, telling us in the name of we are covering the anointing. We are blessed to, to have him in our lives. So whatever that we need to do is to, to represent God and cover his anointing. So this guy, man, truly speaking, I hate that guy, man. I hate for the fact that he, he used me for the, for the fucking five years taking money from us, from our own pockets. We couldn't be able to do nothing with our, with our own money. We didn't do, we couldn't do nothing. Literally, you'd be broke when you know that it is every month you can be able to make up to 100,000 rents. But two days later, five days later, you're left with nothing. I'll be sent left and right. Go and pick up this thing. Go and buy chairs for the church. Go and buy this thing for the church. I literally bought everything from that for that guy. I bought, we, we literally, we bought bought him shoes. I bought him suit. Every Saturday, I would be going to Jobek, going to pick up suits. I would go with Wild. We would go to Jobek, go and pick up the suits. When I get there, the guy would suit tells me that you need to pay 7000 You need to pay 5000 Then That would be coming out of my own pocket. And to think that yesterday, uh, before, when he sent me, he, I had just given a seat of 100000 rent. I just we went to the bank, we drew 500000 rent, took it by my head, went to his house, knelt on his knees and told him that this is my seat of honor. I need to grow. I need to find myself in another level in life. But this nigga, this motherfucker kept on continuing and still and looting and looting and looting nonstop. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, we are not a run. I'm not here to scare to, 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 we are not attacking this guy. We are setting ourselves free. Us speaking out is not because we are crazy. It's not because of anything. We are setting ourselves free because we feel like Amen. we are too. We we have, we have found ourselves in a position where we can't. We, we can't. We, we, we were scared to speak out for the fucking nine, uh, nine months from December last year. We have been covering for him. We were told that when last year when the storm was rising on him because last year when he went to 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 Botswana, he took investments from people. He took a lot of money from people last year. And then he took them around October. December was the time for him to pay out. He, did, he couldn't pay out these people. So when he couldn't pay out these people, he told us when we, are, when we went to his office that he's going to use us as a scapegoat. We need to, to protect the anointing. We were told to confess things that we did not know that we were confessing to. But because at that point, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just uh, caught up in between, you know, this this manipulation you know your mind can't even think you can't even you don't even know what to do at, at, at that point in time we had to confess and agree to things that we didn't know but it is fine we are setting ourselves free today by speaking out not because we are lying i have no reason for me to be lying to about that guy i just know that guy is a fucking scam it's, it's fucking fake and i i'm fucking done with him 
He, hey, he's great, he's great, great. You are, yeah, you we were, were all uh, used by that guy. You swearing I'm, I'm really much. sorry for my I'm language. Gonna I'm, not... I'm gonna meet you. You're swearing too much, and 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 also, you know, it's it's a bit too much, you know. Uh, this is not the right place to do that. But I understand that you are angry, you are crossed. I understand your pain, uh, and you have every reason to feel the way I'm that you feel. But please, for my you, take, you know, we have we want to be, you know, just 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 hold on, uh, George. Uh, can you unmute your mic, please? Your mic is still mute. Yeah, unmute yes, your mic. Like, can you hear me, George? Yes, uh, I can hear and you. And I also want to. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Anza is also here. So we're going to speak also speak to Anza. Anza, you're welcome. Thank you. So George, in brief, tell me, what's your story? How, many, how much did you lose? A million? <laughs> it's over, sir. It's over. Hmm. I don't know if I'm... So tell me about what happened. Okay. I yes, think, you are. Yeah. Speak. Uh, my story is more similar to Ashley Gray and Anza, but I think Ashley Gray is making it a bit light. I'm just going to be straightforward person. I don't want to leave anything unattended. Uh, to be honest with me, I went to New Life 2017, but I'm not, not going to talk about everything, but I want to talk about the financial part of it, how I suffocated financially because of Ms. Um, Zwake Tangretis manipulation in my life that guy first of all is broke he's not as rich as he claimed to be secondly we used to finance his life and his family and his church all of three of us anza mm -hmm. and ashley and myself mm -hmm. we used to finance his church and then another thing every time when we finance him he will give us manipulations he will try to prophesy to us because we are close to the guy that he claims to be his brother Budani. We're always telling Gudani our plans and things that you want to do. And then you will go around and tell Mizi. And then Mizi will call us to the house each now and then to, to, to prophesy over our lives. But only to find out at a later stage that this is the things that we're doing with Gudani. So another thing, I was with him in Botswana. A lot of people, they know, like, from September until October. And then I also went with him to Zambia around November. I was always moving with him to the point that he moved me from being George to a leader at church, and he also made me an evangelist so that people could pay more attention on myself and then they, I could get more business clients so that I can be able to take that money to him. And then another thing that is very painful, again, is because he was always lying to us. A lot of things that we did at church, like a building, the, the recent building, of course, it's in debt. They were failing to pay rent because we we're no longer there. That one is true. And then he, he couldn't even afford to buy new clothes right now because we we're no longer there. Uh, the current building that they were using after we left, it was three months behind when we left church in December. Because I was one guy, they know I was always moving with Bayanda. Everywhere you, he goes, every meeting of New Life and me, I was always with Bayanda because Bayanda, first of all, does he have a car? I was the one transporting mm -hmm. Bayanda everywhere. Mm -hmm. Bayanda, secondly, mm -hmm. I used what? to pay rent for you. Hold on. Yes. Hold on, Jess. How old are you? Um, I'm only 23. How, how do you make money? Do you make your money in a legit way or not in a legit way? Because you, it seems like you are moneyed, you know? Okay. Uh, did you make your money in a, in, a, in a legit way or not legit way? Okay. I'm going to be honest. Some of the money that I made, it was legit. Some it wasn't. Okay, okay, go on. Yes, because I remember with my brothers, there was a time he called us to his house. He even told us how to draft our Forex contract so that we can have more people investing in our business. And so you were involved that, in Forex, forex yes, trading? I was, yes, I was involved in Forex trading. He will call us to his house and then he will tell us how to draft our Forex contract so that we can attract more clients into our businesses. But he told us that every time we get a client to invest in us, we must tell him after receiving the money. We must tell him. And then he will take that money from us indirectly. So he will always send us somewhere to do things for him. Every time he will tell us there's something that is coming up at church. Like myself, I was paying rent and then I was also buying electricity in his house. Every three days, I'll buy 1,000 electricity 
because it's a George, big mansion. Just hold on there. I don't know whose mic is shaky. Um, you know, maybe it's yours, George. I'm not sure who's. There's just been some noise when George is speaking, and I want everyone watching. We have a uh, we have two two thousand seven hundred and fifty seven people watching right now. You know. So you know how important they need to really listen to what you're trying to say. For some of them, it's going to be for them to forgive you guys. For some of them, it's going to be yes. for them to learn and to be able to, because you guys are sharing certain things that are just so transparent and so honest. And I must commend you guys for being so honest because this is a place of honesty. You know, that's what yes. it is. If we, if yes. we don't come yes. and become honest, we're not going to get the freedom that we want. We're going to continue in the same life, causing pain to ourselves and causing pain to other people. You know? So, so you. please just watch your mics. If you can, if you can, maybe I can mute you guys' mics, but just to make sure that people are listening. Continue, George. Okay. So another thing that is most painful is that even the anointing oil that you are selling at church, I was the one always going to buy it. He will lie to church, will say that the anointing oil is it's been exported or imported from uh, Egypt. And then I was the one going to buy the anointing or like 1.3, the ingredient in uh, Jimmy State. And then we'll also buy uh, olive oil at Checkers. The next thing we're going to be mixing those things at church. After mixing those things, we're going to sell one bottle. I think it's 500 milliliter for 500 each. And then it's not like he's not even praying for those things. He never prayed for them, even in Botswana. So our main reason to go to Botswana wasn't uh, precisely about, wasn't exactly about soul winning. It was about money, making money for one-on-one, -on -one, prophesying uh, people, also selling his books and anointing oil. Because every time when we go back uh, to the hotel after the service, he will only be concerned about money, not the souls that we won. He will always tell us that how much money did we make? And then, he, and then when the money is too little, he will become frustrated and very irritated. He will start shouting at everyone that is there. So that's how he used to operate. And then I also have my mentees. We used to call them vendor boys. There was a time he called us at his house and then he told us that we should go to prayer mountain and pretend as if we are praying and take pictures so that people can trust us, they, so that people, they can be able to say that we are not just in forex business. Sometimes we pray, and then he also encourages us to post more scriptures about God, just to deceive people online so that Christians can be able to invest in our business. At the end of the day, you know that that invested money should go to his bank account. I have both his business account and personal account and a change account. With my brothers, we have our statements from 2017 that can prove that we have been sending money uh, to his account. Even people that are in a life right now, they can attest that we will give a church, like from Wednesday to Sunday, I'll give 10,000 now and then. That was a time that I stopped trading because of a pressure. Each and every day, I have to take Bayanda somewhere. Each and every day, I have to transport Bayanda. They will be handling um, Zwake's business and then uh, also the church staff. To, truth of the matter is, Mzwake doesn't have any other business, no physical address. The only business that he had, it was a car wash. And then guess what? He even failed to maintain a car wash. And then I also, um, I was the also that was helping at the car wash with my finances because the wife was failing to pay the staff members. They once had an incident. I had to take out my money to fix everything in car wash. So even for me to get a girlfriend, I had to go and see him for one-on-one -on -one and pay 5000 so that I can consult him about having a girlfriend. So that's the kind of person Mzwake is. And then people sometimes oh, no, they no, think... No, George, George, George. So yes. you have to go and pay Mzwake for consultation. For what? Is he a marriage counselor? Is he the father <laughs> of the bride? Is he the father of the girl? For you to be able to date a girl who is in the church. Yeah. Why yeah. is that? He, How did you qualify? Yeah. What did he tell you you were doing? Actually, Mzwake told us that he is our God. That's what he told us. <laughs> he said he's that our he God. So, yeah, and then not only that, funny part, there was a girl I was dating. He told me to block her on my Instagram because that girl, she's going to drain me spiritually. The following day, he texted the girl on Instagram. 
Go yeah, on, go on, go girl, on. He texted the girl on Instagram, and then the girl she sent me a screenshot. She showed that no, your spiritual father is texting me, and then it's the same guy who told me to leave my girlfriend. So with that five thousand, I also paid to him. He agreed for me to date the lady. After a few weeks, he told us to separate again, so that he can be able to call me again into his office to pay another five thousand to consult him about our relationship. So he will save his ass like that. He will always maintain us like that. Every day when he needs money, he will always create something. And then he will so always tell us, yes. You guys were partners in crime. You were partners in scamming people. Actually, we're not even benefiting. Actually, he was using us to take money from people so that he can yeah, but, benefit. But you also be, 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 you, got, you got your own cut. Yes, the thing is, no, I didn't get my own card because the thing is, we were not, I was trading personally for my own self. But every time we have to pay a church building, these guys, they know the shop right building that we, we got, it was, he told us that it was 12 million or 8 million, if I can recall well. And then he told us that we are buying that building in three months. So we had to give now and then. Firstly, we couldn't afford to pay our rent. There was a time we went like for five months not paying a rent, we'll fight with our agents, yet taking the money because he told us that if your money doesn't meet your, your needs, make it your seed. And then another thing he told us that you'd rather owe people than owing the altar. So that's one of the things that he told us, that we rather owe people than owing the altar. Everything George, should go to him. I'm going to come back to you, George. I'm going to come back to you later yes uh think about something that you missed out that you really have to say anza is here okay. and i also want to welcome tamba um uh, anza yes mr solomon what's your story uh, most of the guys though they've really uh said a lot um because yeah george has, has, has said a, a mouthful um you see solomon dealing with these guys a lot of people might be asking uh, themselves uh, that why, uh, after seeing a lot of things that this guy uh, was doing, why is it that we're still there and not leaving at the time? But the only thing uh, that he took advantage of, it is our love of God at the time. And he's, yeah. he's a master manipulator. He uses uh, threats, uh, is via prophecies, uh, via visions, because a lot of things of faking prophecies and stuff, I didn't know them while I was still there. Things that I found out when I was there. No, I mean, after I came out. Because I genuinely believe, I loved that guy. I believe that he's a man of God. You know, seeing that when he was prophesying people, uh, praying for people, that's one thing that convinced me, no, that this is a dear man of God. And he was very close to my heart. Little did I know that, you know, he was taking <laughs> advantage of us at the time. So it's like, I don't know what they're using. It's like, you know, a lot of things you don't see them when you're inside. You only see them when you've come out. It's like there's a veil that they put um, on your eyes. It's like they have a spell on you. That's why it's difficult. That's why you have people who are still defending these people uh, while they're still there, when we expose the truth. Because I believe that there's something that they're using. There's a spell that they're using on people that even if you can pre uh, present the case with proof in front of people, you won't believe that um, all of these things that I said about them, they're true. Um, my story, you know, it's basically similar to most of the guys that have been, uh, have been talking. When I, I used to question a lot of things, uh, but when, when I had questions in my mind, you know, I always tell myself that maybe it's the devil who's talking I'll rebuke, you know, those thoughts at the time, not knowing that maybe it's God who's talking to me because I was a personal photographer of that guy um, from late 2014. All pictures, all posters that you see of that guy on social media, I'm the one who was uh, responsible for that. So I was his, his media guy. I was doing graphics for him and I was involved in multimedia stuff. So that's how I got, I got uh, that close to him, you know? 
Um, I lost uh, a lot of money also, you know. Uh, I wouldn't say that that guy, you know, he put a gun on our face to take the money, but he manipulated us to make us give him the money. He made us feel the need to give him money. And he gave us the pressure so that we can give him the money. You understand? Because everything that they are pushing, the church, church is their business. Church is his business. Like George said, he's not involved in any uh, business. There's no business. He, he claims that he has a lot of businesses of which he doesn't. There's a picture that was trending uh, where he posted that he has trucks of which he told me to, to Photoshop for him and put a logo for him uh, on the trucks there so that it can look like it's, it's uh, his business branding that was trending that I shared uh, on my on my post this this week. So, so, so Andrew, you are the one that makes him look good. You are the ones that yes. help him to, dece to deceive people on social media and to, exactly. to be able to be crafty. You are the guy behind, you are the mastermind. I'm the guy who was behind. I'm the one who branded him. I made him. In fact, all of us here, we made him. Come on. So that is exactly what's what has been happening. Uh, I said when I there's something that that you know raised a lot of thoughts uh, in my mind when we when we had to go to Zambia. Um, the level of greed that that guy has is just on another level. That's one person will never help you even with fifty rand when you're in trouble. Instead of helping you, he'll rather want to take from you. The time he sent us uh, to Zambia, you know, we are going there because we loved God anyway, and they gave us they gave us nine hundred rands because, okay, me and George we we are broke and we didn't have money at the time. They gave us nine hundred rand to go to to Zambia. Before we could leave the Val, we were left with a hundred rand because I had to pour a full tank on my car and then we had to leave and go via Botswana. When you go to Botswana, we went there, and fortunate enough, there was another guy who was also a victim whom they took a lot of money from in Botswana. He's the one who helped us and organized uh, transport for us to go to and gave us some cash so that we can manage to uh, proceed with our trip to go to, to Zambia. When you go to Zambia, Bayanda was sent there a week before. When he was sent there, there's a guy called Luxin. I hope he's here watching the live so that he can know what really happened. He was there. He met Bayanda in Zambia, in Lusaka, to prepare the work. They didn't give, Bayanda didn't have, they didn't even give him money to go and prepare the work for the service they were having. And when we got there, okay, he bought where he was staying. They did a lot of things on credit, uh, promising people that they will pay when the man of God comes, of which, they were putting everything on that boy's name who was there in Lusaka helping uh, Bayanda. So we got there in Zambia. We stayed like another week preparing for the work. We were staying in the lodge and that was not paid for with the impression that we'll pay when the man of God comes. And we had the service there. The venue was booked and it was not really fully paid because they told the, the owners of the building that they're going to pay after after the service. After the service, we had to dodge because they had this tendency of dodging every time when they're supposed to pay. You can go to Radisson Blue, even now where they had bars and ask how much New Life Valley is owing. They'll tell you that they are owing there because we're there, we used to have bus uh, seminars there. They didn't pay. So, when you go to Zambia, after we had the service, something that really disturbed me, I was with him, I was with Bayanda in the room, he was talking to, to me, telling him that, no, we have this, so much expenses that we have to pay. We have credit, uh, we have not paid where we are staying. Uh, we have not paid for the flyers, we have not uh, paid for the venue and stuff, of which everything was on that boy because he's the one who made, um, who organized stuff because he was in Lusaka. What really disturbed me that day, uh, him, me, because I was with Bayanda, the other guys were in the other room. He told them, he told, he told by us, he said, we should leave 3 a.m. in the morning while they're sleeping. He said we should dodge and leave that boy there 
and leave 3 a.m. while uh, they are sleeping. And then we had to leave and leave that boy in that, in that place. We had to dodge 3 a.m. in the morning. We told him that uh, Gudan will meet you in the morning to give you the money of everything that is owed that has to be paid. And then we left him there. After we left, that boy was calling us nonstop. He told us that police are here. Uh, they don't want him to leave because we, because we are owing. We have not paid for this place where we are staying for two weeks, and then we have to leave. And it's not that there was the money was not there. The money was there. People gave offering, but they couldn't cover for the services for the expenses. That's the level of greed that he has. And then we had to leave that boy there. Unfortunately, I didn't have money at the time. If I had money, I was gonna pay for whatever that was supposed to be paid for. Another sad story, you know, there's a lot I'm just going to share in part. Uh, in the past day... Let's hold on. I'll, I'll come back to you. Let's, let's hold on. I'll come okay. back to you. This program is supposed to be ending now. Uh, it's supposed to be two hours, but uh, I think we, we're just going to add 30 minutes so we can round this up uh, because there's quite a the Yannick is just, just joined us and there's also Temba that hasn't shared yet and I think quite a bit of you guys have quite a lot to say. So... I, I, Watching, there's 2,701 people still wanting to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, and I just want to say to everyone watching now, you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, please go subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Solomon's Temple. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There are other explosive videos there that you can watch because this is all about really trying to bring truth and righteousness and holiness back into the church because that's what the church is really supposed to be known for. Tamba, what's your story? Did you lose money? Did you lose your wife? Did you lose your car? What did you lose? I lost everything in my life, bro. I started down below. You understand? I started before all these guys. Can you hear me, everyone? Yeah? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. We can. Okay. I started before all these things started. Miz was a good guy, you understand? I used to party before I went to church, you understand? First time I went to church, I was invited by Mavoso. He was my dude, yeah. We used to work together. Then I went to church, I asked him, my man, I just want to change. Uh, I want to be a good guy, man. I'm a party guy. Let me go to the church. I don't know. Do you have time? I'll tell my story. Please make it. Can you be making short in five minutes? I'm going to make it fast. Then, okay. Things Just give us started. the highlight. Sorry. So we can go around. Okay. I love it. I became a generous guy to new life. When the new life started, when it changed his name from everybody knows what the previous name of the church was. And then I believe in everything that was happening in the church. And then every money I have, I gave it away. I gave it away. I never think of myself. Like all new things, I gave it my office equipment, nice office equipment. Everybody was always going there. They kneel down there. They put the money on top of the table. Even myself, I always put in the money the top of the table, then I asked myself, oh, God, what is happening? And then, uh, there was at that time I left church, I listened to my heart. That time, Marshall, hey, Marshall, where are you? Where's Marshall? First time he came to church. Marshall was from there. Yeah. The time he came to church, that's when I left was talking, he said, hey, Papa, Papa, this is what is happening. They say, you have to scream this way. This is how your miracle is going to happen. I was losing everything. My house was going away. I lost my car. You understand? The time I gave, I gave the, that guy my money, the money what, the money what was left, I should give it to the bank. I gave it to me in private. How much was that? I gave twenty three thousand in cash, and then before that, I was hoping that 
maybe I was going to get my money back because of the stress and everything. I had more money. On my trading, I deposited maybe around 120,000. Then I thought maybe I was going to make it because I was under pressure. That guy was supposed to have a first cinema of a... You remember the first cinema in Sentin? The one he was supposed to do. He said I must give away uh, 70,000. I said I'll give you 70 grand. You don't know why. Then I lost all my money in my life. It was the first time I lost the money in my life. I was going to give him 70 grand to book the hotel. I was with Bayanda. I showed by Bayanda there's a Marshall Hotel in Sentin. That is cheaper than other hotels. But after that, they chose to go to... Uh, what was that hotel? Redison Blue. Redison Blue. Yeah, Redison Blue. Yeah, Redison Blue. They went to that hotel. And that was where the cinema was held. So I was seminar. asked to take... Yeah, that seminar, the first one. I was asked but, to pay yeah. 70 grand. Yes. I was supposed to give away that money. Then I promised I will give that money. So I promised. Then I could not do that. I was under pressure. I don't know what happened. I lost everything. But I managed. It was like I could commit a suicide and everything. I don't like to be classy, like to be looked like, hey, hey, this and that and that. You understand? But hey, my man. Things became worse. But I never shared that kind of the story. But it is what mm. happened yeah. under the curtain. Yes. Mm. Mm. I feel so, you and I hear you. And then the guy asked me, hey, bro, did you lose all the money? Then I told him, I said, yes, I lost the money. Then he looked at me, then he left with other, other eyes. Say, ah, maybe it's part of life, you see. So, I continue. Push everything. I lost. It's very painful. It's very short of time. I was going to tell you the whole lot of stories. <laughs> and how you used Can to I Because every time, the, when, every time when I was... When I was at check, Tibotile, hey, you are here. Yeah, I can see. I was, can I say something on your story? He said that you you put hundred and something in your Forex account and you blew it because you were supposed to sow it to the church and you didn't listen mm. to God. That was, yeah. that was his reason. Mm. Hey, Bongani is here, guys. Hey, Bongani. Bongani is here. Bongani Bongani. We need Bongari to speak. We need Bongari to speak. Okay, First okay, time, okay. Man, before, before, before Ashley, all these things happened. Before Ashley, before George, we started before, like, we're giving money, like, before. Bongani, I, because uh, Bayanda was a manipulator. You know that guy, man? He used to go out of it. Bongani. Okay, yeah. we're gonna Not go to Bongani. I'm saying, Bongani. <laughs> Bongani, I'm saying, by your mic is off. Bongani, your mic is off. Can you switch on your mic while he's switching on his mic? Please switch on your mic. I'll give you a sign when your mic is switched on. Uh, while he's trying to get that. George, uh, sorry, um, Gray, tell us about Nzuai case, Juju, Muti, and also his, uh, his house. Quite a lot of things I hear happens in that home. Thank you, sir. Um, at first, at first, I want to apologize for my language. Uh, uh, I believe I won't be saying that again. Um, you know that That's guy fine. in. That's in, fine. In Morgan, you might Thank you. Great. That, that guy, yes. he has, he has, he has this one room oh. in his house that no nobody's allowed to enter. Yeah. 
he, nobody nobody can enter the room in his house i'm not sure what's really happening in it but one of the guys who are staying there you know he once confirmed to me what's really happening in the booty the, the room is always dark there are candles in it there are candles red candles and a lot of things going on that side and i think that's where he actually do his, his rituals before and that guy number one at night he doesn't sleep every time we would always be called to his house every night literally he would call us from 11 we'll be there playing chess you even sleep while seated the whole night uh, so that uh, is true he is would be there from 11 until 4 a.m that's when he goes to sleep because i don't know what is he, what is he afraid of and we we, we, all, we all we also know that sometimes at church before let's say church services he would plant things in the church so that just so that whoever that comes to see on the church services, they can be hypnotized and you know believe in whatever that he's gonna be doing for that service on that day. And I remember also when 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 we got the, the new building, when we we're renting the new building, um, before the church, uh, before there had to be like construction and uh, like renovations and all of these things. That's where he was planting things like peaks. I don't know what what he was planting there. But these are the things that I actually found out when I when I left the when I left the church. I didn't know what was happening back then, and also I know that he, the round that the house that is living in now, he is renting it, uh, from Bosa. Uh, Bosa. Last year when we were in Botswana, he borrowed one of his brother, uh, hundred and fifty thousand pula. I had to transport that money from Botswana. I literally drove uh twelve hours. I was in Kaburone. I had to drive from Kaburone to Francis Town and back. When I got back to, to Kaburone, I had to drive back from Kaburone back to South Africa. Okay. And that day, I, I had an accident on my way back. I, hit, I think there was a springbok lying on the road. I think it was because it was cold. So I hit the springbok. And that day, I was told how useless I was. That Why, why did I take my time? How did I drive? Why, why was I driving so useless? I'm taking my time. There is a pressure here. Charisma, I remember that day, that, that lady, she called to tell me that the, the, the man of God is angry and he's not a man of God. But he told me that side that the, the, the man of God is angry. He's very disappointed in me. To think that I literally went to Botswana to borrow for him because he was borrowing money from this guy. I to say. He's driving an Audi A7 in Botswana. He lives outside of Francis Town, 150,000 pula. I remember that day when we arrived back to South Africa. George had to come and pick me up because I just told my car I was left in the garage. I stayed in the garage for two hours. We left with the garage. We left with the car. We went to back to van. When we were in the van, we left, went to to, to the airport to, to go um what is it to to exchange, you know, to check to exchange the, the rate. We changed it from there. That's when I saw for the first time. I realized that he was paying down because I knew who the owner of the house, where he bought the house from. So when he was paid, I knew he was written rent. One to, you know, when you are when you are renting something, they will write um, bargain this thing. You know, rent something, a something. You know, just to prove as a reference that you are renting out this, this place. So I realized that this person all along, all these years, he has been lying to us that he's owning this house. He bought it for thirteen million. All I can do is is renting yeah. it out. You know. Okay. All this, all this lifestyle okay. that, that we see out there is just fake. Um, I get you. You know, when I listen to some yeah. of you guys, I just hear, like, to be honest with you, I have to be brutally honest with you guys. I just feel like a lot of you, you guys went to that church because you were greedy. You know, because you there's a certain that. image that was projected. I know you guys. Some of you guys were honestly seeking for that. You know, I knew you were looking. Some of you guys are really seeking for God. You know, so there are guys that are greedy and got in there, and there are guys that were really seeking for God. You know, in there, and then you became part of the greed and part of the manipulation. Without you, over time, one year, two years, now you changed. You became who you didn't want to become. <laughs> you see the you, you see how he got you inside there. You know, yeah. and then you keep on serving. We have regrets. And that's why you're sharing your stories because there are people that are watching now. They are going through the same thing you're going through now. Yeah. You know, you would be the one, your story will be the one that would make them say, Look, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I need out. I need to go out. Mm -hmm. I'm Bongani. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Bongani, you, you know, said you must. You know what makes me love Solomon? One thing. Uh, sorry, I, I want to speak about uh, Bongani. Me and Bongani, we were renovating the new building. Uh, there's a guy called Genius. If I can tell you that when we tell people that Mzwake is not a millionaire, like he's claiming to be having money and uh, all those things, he doesn't have money. It's all a show off on Instagram, showing off cars and stuff like that. It's all a lie. The cables that are in the church right now, at the new church, the new building, there was no box mm. of electricity. There was no cables of electricity and plugs and stuff like that. If I can tell you mm. those things, we bought them from a guy who stole them. Those things were stolen. We paid for them. They came in the church. They were stolen. The guy came and they were stolen. And genius paid for those things and say, Papa, there's a guy who's going to organize this thing and stuff like that. Those things were stolen. The electricity, everything we connected in the building. Everything was yeah. stolen. Zwake is not a millionaire. There's a guy called genius. He's, he's watching right now. He's the guy who organized with another guy and say we've got cables and stuff like that. They were stolen. They were stolen. There is nothing that I learned from Zwake. I went to the church because for the love of God. But one thing that I learned from Zwake that I know is to say if anyone comes and attack you, make sure you learn to pay the police. That's number one. Make sure you must have a lawyer on standby. That's number two. Make sure you must have a hitman. That's number three. Make sure you are ready to fight with all the blood. That's number four. From Zwake. That's what I learned. And everyone who leaves the church, Muzwake will go to the pulpit and lie. And lie about those people that they left. I rebuke him. He was not listening to me. This and this, this and this, this and that, this and that. That's what Muzwake do. And all these guys who were saying they were giving money and stuff like that. When I bought my truck, Muzwake told me, son, buy the truck. Don't worry, buy the truck. My first shop and my second shop, buy it. Those people, they must give. You, you mustn't give. That's what Mzake, Mzake does. We never give me and Bayanda. But we knew that George, Ashley, and Enza minister, they were fools. They must give. As we're claiming that we're giving, we never give. I never give any money. I can say the money that I give, maybe it's about 2,000, 500, 100 rand for offering to make the people think that we're giving. We never give in that church. But these fools, they must think that we're giving. And the people who run in the front, how much are you giving? How much are you giving? Muzwake is collecting money. Muzwake never had any, any business. He doesn't have any business. And another hey, bro, thing that I want to ask God fools. for forgiveness. And another, another thing that I want to ask God for forgiveness is for me for going in the front of the church and lie to the people. The testimony that I lied to the people, that me, I'm lying to the people, the testimony that I did, that Muzwake told me to say, go and lie, I teach you this, I teach you that, I teach you this. Muzwake, you never taught me about business. The only thing that you taught me, Mzwake, number one, number one, the only thing that you taught me, Mzwake, is to scam, that's number one, is to make sure you kill, that's number two. That's the only thing that you taught me, Mzwake. You never taught me anything. You never taught me anything good, Mzwake. Nothing that you taught me any good. There are many people that are watching right now that I'm owing, that I'm supposed to pay. That I'm supposed to pay right now because of you. Pressure that I was getting from church, wear this suit, be nice. Every picture, I've got every picture, I've got every video. I buy every suit every weekend. Ask Bongani. Why I don't have food? I came to the church with my girlfriend. That girlfriend of yours is not good. You're not supposed to marry her. He wanted me to date the sister. He wanted me to marry his sister, Mzwake. Mzwake was never good at me, Solomon. My heart is burning. People, they believe and defend Mzwake. I feel sorry for people that are defending Mzwake right now that are in the church. They don't know what's happening, that boy. How is manipulating people? How is destroying people's lives? And if I'm telling you that's that I was the main guy, everyone who walks in the church, everyone knows that Masha will sit on the door. I wait on the door, I stand, I walk around with the mic. We give each other signs, me and Mzwake. While he's preaching, I tell him this role number, what, what? He comes to you, okay, can I prophesy? Have you talked to me before? Do I know you? Have you ever WhatsApp anybody here? No, Papa. So when do you want me to prophesy? That's all was done by me. Swear to God, to the living God, I swear with my kids' life. I was the guy who was giving Muzwake information to prophesy on people. I was the guy who was giving Muzwake everything. 
everything. I was the guy who was giving Jackie everything. And then mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he lies in the church about me. After what I've done for that guy, after what I've done, many things, singer to renovate the church, he didn't pay the guys. They come there, they want to take the equipment. I close everything. Muzwake doesn't teach any son anything. He teaches you to lie. That's what Muzwake is good at. Teach you to lie. That's what Muzwake is good at. He's good at talking. He's good at manipulating. He's going to go tomorrow on Instagram and lie. Ah, those people, they are paid. Those people, they are what, what. That's how good he is. I'm going to leave this to, 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 to my nanny. He can speak. Now, Marshall, thank you so much. And you have set a precedent, which is what I really encourage every one of you here. We are not here to condemn you. We're here to just be transparent and accountable. I feel what you're going through, Marshall. Marshall has not just repented, he is restituting. So there is one thing to repent, and it's another thing to say, look, I need to restitute. And restitution means you have to take back what you took from somebody, you take it back to them. Some of you have taken from people and you have to take it back. That's true repentance. If you don't do that, you will live a life of emptiness for so many years, for the rest of your life, if you don't make things correct. So think about it. Who do you need to repent to? Who do you need to ask for forgiveness? Who do you need to go to? Who do you need to send a message to and say, look, I'm sorry, you didn't know I did this, but I did this. You know, which public platform do you need to go and do that? Because that, that Nzuaike would not want you to do that because for him, that's how he operates. So he doesn't, he doesn't know about repentance and forgiveness. That is something alien to him. Like Bongani or somebody was saying, or was it Temba? Nzuaike, I believe he started as a great guy, wanted to really serve God. I believe that. Can I ask you know, him a, I can I ask me a question? Can I ask him a question? Marshall, yeah. the first time you came to church, my man, you see, you were celebrating, man. And that was the day I left. There was a guy, Rapita. He was with cross. You understand? And then he was owing a house, standard bank. That guy, he told him that his house is paid off. He's got debt cancellation. And I remember I owe Standard Bank the home loan also. You see, they say you have to celebrate as much as your miracle is next to another. And then you spoke, you were celebrating next to another. You are the act. Because that time, it was the first time you came to that church. Then I decided to leave, to leave the church. You understand, bro? I was deep in debts. I owe a lot of people. I was owing people more than 735,000. I have to pay it back to them. You understand? Most of the money I was giving it to church. And then we were celebrating. Hey, your debt will be cancelled. I say, at least I'll be left with the house. And this guy was owing the house, and then it was just a fake letter that came next to him. And that's that's that's, that's what we need to do. Then guys. I celebrated. They say you have to celebrate miracle when it comes next to you. As, ask themselves, because I never yeah. tell my stories to anybody. Because that yes. guy, for for him to prophesy to you, you have to go to him and tell him your story. And then you will tell it to others as if it's a prophecy. That is what I hated. Many people left. Because they will tell their story, then you will tell it to public. Personal things, bro. You understand? Ask myself, how come? Ask hey, this, this guy, how come? But you know, at that time, I was who? You should never question anything in the church. In the name of God that we serve at that time, and then the God that we answer, we ask, we answer Him of money. If you don't have money, God will never answer you. All right, let's go but on. Child, let's go on. Temba. Temba, we need to we need to give Bongani an opportunity. He hasn't spoken. Bongani, please go ahead.
Can you hear me, Bongani? Can you hear me? We don't seem to get you. George, are you there? Was Bongani is sorting out himself. George, are you there? And guys, I, I really want to say, I really want to say this, you know, especially in this mood of, of repentance from our heart, you know, I really want to say that, I, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people who have tried to help people to come out of this, but you guys are one of the very transparent people that I've interviewed. And you are young people, most of you here. And I don't want you to miss this opportunity and go that would affect your relationship with God. You know, so, so I really pray, I really pray that you, you guys will really stay on the course. Whatever pain and the damage that Nzuake has caused, forgive him. I hear somebody say, I hate him. We don't hate people. We hate what people do that is wrong. But we do not hate the person. The person was created by God in the image of God. And we love them. Because once you begin to hate the person, then you are actually disabling your relationship with God. Because God doesn't understand what hate is. But the devil will want you to hate because you've been in pain. And we're not denying the fact that this guy has inflicted pain on, on some of you guys. That's just the fact. Bongani, your mic is off. You want to switch on your mic so you can speak? Is that okay? Can you hear me, Bongani? Yeah, I don't, I don't hear you, but I see you hear me, but, but I, don't, I don't hear you. Try again. Just log out and log in. George. Yes, sir. Now, what, what, what do you want to share with people, especially when it comes to like Forex and all this trading thing and all that, that people who are watching would be able to, to learn to protect themselves from people like Zuike and and the former and the former judge, because the former judge also took some time to scam people, you know. Uh, yeah. But how? Would, what would you want to tell people, just so you they would be they would watch out, uh, because a lot of churches are doing the same thing. Bushiri is doing the same thing. I'm sure you saw it in the news <laughs> this yeah. week. How yeah. you know, yeah. Bushiri is doing the same thing. But sometimes yeah. people are so naive or ignorant and they don't and they don't know. What would you want to tell yeah. people in, in just a minute? What would you want to tell people and say, look, please, brothers and sisters, look out for this, look out for that? Okay, what I can say to people is that first of all, not everything that you see online is real. Some people, most people, they live fake lifestyle online just to get people to believe them and to invest in their businesses. And then another thing, before you join a Forex, you need to make a background check about the person that you want to invest your money in, whether they have a certificate for Forex that are legally like FSP license. You need to do a background check about them. And then another thing, don't just go into Forex because of uh, seeing people posting cars and houses. Because at the end of the day, you don't know whether those people are owning those houses or uh, those cars and houses, they belong to the bank. And then the most important thing, before you enter into any financial deal in future, at least involve a third party or legal authorities like lawyers or anyone that is a financial advisor to create a contract on your behalf so that you guys sign it. But for now, I wouldn't encourage people uh, to do forex businesses, especially with people from prophetic churches. Because anything in prophetic church is a lie. 
it's a scam. It's a one-man show because every money that you make in a profit church, it has to benefit the pastor. Mm. So that's all I can say for now. Thank you, George. And uh, Bongani, are you back? Can you hear me? Ah, still. We really want to hear from Bongani. You know, people, I must, I've been posting some of the comments, and I'm sure some of you guys have been reading some of the comments. Uh, yeah. uh, Michael, a lot of people are sympathizing with you, you know, and, and really feeling your pain. The pain that you are, you are accepting what you did, you know, and really, you know, it's a pain in itself. You know, so a lot of people are saying, you know, you guys have uh, have really educated them and really saying so, a whole lot of stuff. They actually, a lot of people are actually saying we should have a second, a second part. <laughs> you yes, know, uh, of actually, I'm yeah, part of about, them. I'm angry. Yeah. yeah uh, sorry, Mr. Solomon. Actually, that's what I also wanted to highlight because I believe there's still more that we can share with people that can help people. That's not all that we said today. Today we had to give each other a platform to speak out. I this was an just an, yeah, I've got this a was just an, yeah, yeah. This was I've just an introduction because I believe okay. some people, uh, some people they believe in evidence. We have a proof you that we can me also for two show million. to some people. Did I tell you, Miss sued me for two million? They sued me for two million in February. He must raise his mother. His mother will go and pay. I'm not playing those games. Uh, and then again, uh, and then again, Mr. Solomon, I still believe that, yeah, we still need a, a second uh, live stream to go live with you because we have more evidence that we can show. Okay. Okay. Judge Freeze there. Got, Bongani, I can you hear me? Bongani cannot. Okay. I think... Who wants to come to back to here? People that this is what I did for me. Is, this is why he sent. Yes, I yeah. might feel on. Yes, who wants to come back here for a second round? Okay, almost everyone consent. So uh, yeah. I don't know who is going to coordinate this. Some of you guys have your numbers. Some of you guys, I don't have your numbers. But we need to do that so we can take time to deal with certain areas where we haven't dealt with. Uh, Marshall, you were raising your hands. Your mic is off. Your mic is off, Marshall. Your mic, your mic is off, Mike. Yes. Oh, there's a guy. There's a guy called Jack Stelle. He's still in the church. He's still loyal to Mzwake. He was given a prophecy by Mzwake, uh, 2020, 20, 2019, 20, from 2018 to 2019 crossover. That prophecy was created by me. Jack Stele, Muzwake didn't see anything. I'm going to say it loud right now. Muzwake didn't see anything. You can be loyal as much as you want. But I gave Muzwake the prophecy to prophesy you. I went to your Facebook page. And I checked everything, what you do, and the type of cars that you are driving. I gave to Muzwake. What did he do? He prophesied you on the 31st. Everything that Muzwake prophesied you, uh, Jack Stele, it's me that gave him the prophecy. I gave... Um, Zwake, the prophet, to prophesy you, Jack Stella. You can be loyal, you can follow Zwake as much as you want, but I'm telling you, I was the guy who was giving Zwake the prophecies. I still have a recording that I recorded you outside, Jack Stella. I have the recording in my phone. I knew these things were going to help me one day, and I kept them. I still have the chats that I was having with Zwake on Telegram, on WhatsApp, and his number from London when he came back from Hubert Angel. I still have the chats on Zwake. I have them. And it's time for the people to know the truth. Thank you very much there. So we're going to have a second part, which is I'm going to... Uh, I don't know who's going to facilitate this. Somebody needs to coordinate this because I don't have all uh, your numbers. Bongani. Bongani. Um, yeah, Bongani, just so he would be the first person to speak. When next time we, we you know, in the second round, he will be the first person to speak. Uh, so Bongani, uh, please uh, send me your number on on uh, on Facebook, or you know, just so we can talk. I'll send you his number. Uh, yeah, please, and then we can yeah. either next week or the week after we can get back here. And like George was saying, we need to present evidences, you know, because 
I got I don't want uh, to think 2017 bank statement. Yeah, that's not the thing. This one is not about lying. It's not about taking things personal, you know. So it's, it's, it's very important for us to do that. And if you know any other person, I know, Judge, you have two of your brothers that also want to speak, uh, you know. Oh, they are, yeah, they are here already, I think. They're here already, and okay. The, uh, yeah. Okay. You know, so we need to be able to discuss that. But in closing, in closing, I want to read a scripture for you guys from John chapter 8, verse 32. We all know that scripture. It says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you don't know the truth, you can never be free. Zyk doesn't know the truth because he doesn't know Jesus. Right now, he doesn't know Jesus. We see Marshall crying. We see people angry. We see people swearing because you're not free when all this happened. Be why? Because there was no truth. But you are here because of truth. And I must say, I must commend every one of you and I must tell you guys that I appreciate every one of you guys that is here. Not not joking in any way, but I must appreciate any one of you, every one of you guys that is here. Mm -hmm. Whatever that you do, truth is important. Freedom can only come from truth. Freedom cannot come from money that I make from Forex. Money is good. Good money, legally made money is good. Freedom cannot come to, from sexual desires. Freedom cannot come from, from cars from accolades, from positions. Freedom cannot come when you manipulate people like Ma Marshall was saying. Marshall was like the masterminder of the miracles. Freedom cannot come from there, brothers and, si and sisters. Freedom cannot come from there. But by virtue of the fact that you agreed to even come here to speak, it will be sad for me to see you going back to doing the things that you used to do. Never. My heart will be so broken. You should be the ones telling, setting other people, educating other people and setting them free. Mm. So I thank you guys, you know, and I appreciate every one of you. And let me say a short prayer for you guys. Father, I pray for every one of them. You know their past. You knew their beginning, you know their now, you know their future. Wherever they are right now, Lord, I pray that the spirit of truth, which is Jesus, would be upon each and every one of them. To lift them up. To set them free. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Father, I speak liberty over them. Liberation. I speak honesty. A lot of them were living in deceptions, deep deceptions before. Father, I speak honesty, accountability in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for every one of them. Thank you for the truth. May it go out there and help somebody. And we pray for Nzuaike. Frank Nzuaike Nlayan. We pray for him. We pray for his soul. Not me. I'm not praying for that nonsense. That his soul will be saved. No, I'm we not praying pray. for him. The devil. And we pray, Olaf. We pray. Me too. We've got a lawyer to call me today. They, they, they want to sue me again for the second <laughs> time, like they did in February. He sued me for two million. He must. Baro, he, he must let, me finish, his father, let me finish his my prayer. Let me finish my prayer. I'm Lord, sorry, we man. pray that you will save you his soul and expose his manipulation. Hmm. Bring him to repentance. We bless you. And for everyone carrying anger, heart, and pain here, only you can help them deal with it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pharaoh. Amen. I have dealt with amen. a lot of stuff. I have been taken to court so many times by Bushiri. I'm ready. I'm ready. By everybody. I'm ready. I'm My ready. wife has been harassed. 
my wife was pregnant. They harassed my wife. They come to my house three times to kill me. Would that keep I'm me quiet sure. and shut up? I would never shut up. Never shut up. Because you know, you know, they know if you are scared to die, which means you're scared to live, man. I'm not ready to die. You have to be ready to die. Can ask no. his brothers oh, and his if, 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 if I was still a new life, if, if I was still a new life, bro. If if I was still a new life, if if I was still a new life, Solomon, I was the one who was gonna organize a hitman to take you down. All of you, <laughs> I, I was the guy who was gonna organize a hey, hitman bro, to take you down. All of scare, you, I don't scare all with of all you guys, hey, bro. I, mean, I was I the guy who was gonna organize a hitman. And you will that see. That you have to import him because you need to cross a lot. I'm coming to... now. I'm serious. I understand you, Marshall. I understand you, Marshall. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, went, I went to I went to Kibotile's work with me and Bayanda. We told them that to zip your mouth. Don't ever say anything. If you put you, your you mouth, you're dead. Mouth. I want to hear that boy. I tell you, yeah. I'm a footy man. Yeah. Not about that. Especially when yeah, I yeah, gray. Don't talk too much yeah. because I told you gray. I told you gray that you're becoming a problem. At the church, and we organized to take you out when a gray. You remember? I told I remember, you. I remember you told me. Yeah, that we're organizing to take you out. There's a lot to say. We organized to take you out because you're becoming a problem. People are complaining about you on Facebook. And then we sit down. We organized to take you out, gray. I remember. You remember? Yet, I told you that we're ready to take you I out. Remember. Yeah. And, and yet this, we're this ready. Same person yeah, that, we're, that kept on telling me that exactly. Me on the table. Okay, please exactly. don't take. Who was the mastermind? Don't take Marshall, don't initiate something that we'd have to take Muzwake out. We're not taking anybody out, right, guys? We're not no. taking anybody no. out, okay? No. <laughs> it stops here, no. yeah. But, 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 but again, I thank you, yeah. again, I I thank you every one of you guys. We're gonna be thank back you. here. Uh, I will let you guys know when we're gonna be back here mm -hmm. so we can continue. If his boyke tries to touch any of you guys, he's touching all of us. I know. All of us now must be together. If he tries to touch mm. any of you, he's if he tries to touch Marshall, he's touching everyone. If he tries Temba or George or Bongani or Kibo um, Kibotile, he's touching <laughs> all of us. Pharaoh that has a court, court, whatever, legal, whatever, all of us. So let's be united and stay together. So I want to thank you so thank much. You and thank much. everyone who is also watching. Thank you so much for, you. for staying. Thank you. Thank you. Almost thank you. But I appreciate you, you guys. Please mm -hmm. make sure you go to my, uh, my YouTube channel, Solomon's Temple. Subscribe. There are great videos there that you can watch. Uh, it's very important for you to watch that. Maybe you can share it with other people and all that kind of stuff. But you had what this man has to say and some of these young people have to say. They've been through a lot, you know, and, and it's important for us to keep to keep talking about it. But we're going to have a second part. I'm going to let you guys know. Uh, it's late, and I know you're getting tired. Everybody's getting tired. So I want to say thank you uh, so much. Thank you for taking the time to just be here. Uh, and we don't take it for granted. Please keep sharing this. Don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, today. Thank you so much. God bless you and have a wonderful evening.